In a room located in a tall building, we can see two lovers in the room, Wang Tianxia, who entered the world of gangsters when he was three years old, and after more than 20 years of struggle, finally united the gangsters in Sea City together. Widely, he was hailed as the youngest gangster in history. And then, a man was seen approaching Wang Tianxia to make a transaction with him, but the delivery man was sweating as he stood in front of Wang Tianxia. He was carrying up to 20 kilograms of high-class goods that he ordered. Then Wang Tianxia told his subordinates to check it. First, and apparently according to him, this seems to be a genuine product. However, after that, this was the first time Wang Tianxia traded this type of goods, so it looked very suspicious. Wang Tianxia was shamelessly the gangster's father. He was the one who united this entire sea of cruelty of the city. There was no need to doubt. Even they used children child to test the item. And then, after doing the test, and the results he felt were fine, Wang Tianxia dared to try it and showed a satisfied face for this imported milk powder. It was really genuine. It also had a taste like mother's milk. Then, Wang Tianxia was very satisfied with these goods and decided to cooperate, but not to sell illegal substances, but to schedule an appointment to this area to make resale. But he looks a bit pale because Aden is very difficult to understand. That they are gangsters who do not collect protection, but sell powdered milk like this. And then, while he was talking to his brother, suddenly Wang Tianxia was shot by someone from a distance, and the shot hit Wang Tianxia's shoulder. And then, he fainted, and he felt it was too cold and too dark. This was the feeling like death. But after that, suddenly on the other side, a schoolboy was seen who was unconscious in a toilet, and it turned out he was Wang Tianxia. When he was killed, Wang Tianxia turned into a schoolboy named Chun Hao. He woke up and was daydreaming. He saw that he was surrounded by some naughty kids who kept bothering him. Chen Hao got annoyed and taught them a lesson, then just left him. And then, Wang Tianxia went to wash his face looked in the mirror making him look confused, and it was clear that he had just been hit by a bullet. But how was he now in this child's body? Wang Tianxia looked at the mirror. How was he in this little child's body? And what happened? In the end, Wang Tianxia was so confused he was about to take out his cell phone to call Aden. And then, when he saw his appearance now, it was hard for Wang Tianxia to recognize himself. Currently, the three bullies had returned, they could not allow to finish the battle like that and had to take revenge for Wang Tianxia, not caring and leaving. They got angry and started insulting his mother who shouldn't have given birth to a son like him, Wang Tianxia said. It's okay if he insults him, but not his mother. Then, Wang Tianxia beat the three young men until they were helpless. Then he took the man's shirt and stroked his hair a little to get back some of his previous metal. Seeing that Wang Tianxia was so aggressive, that the others were about to leave, he spoke up the three boys who were shaking let Wang Tianxia interrogate him. And then, they found him passed out in the toilet, so they peed on his face and woke him up. Wang Tianxia understood that if that was the case while he was peeing on their faces, it would be a draw that these people rejected. Even though Wang Tianxia had used a bit of his killing intent, they still had no doubts. Wang Tianxia laughed at their appearance, and then he said to accept them as his disciples. At this time, the principal arrived. He saw everyone's faces. He immediately guessed that they had just finished fighting. And then he called all of them to the principal's room to interrogate them. All were dragged to the office, but no one said who hit first because the other three were the ones in the wrong. So the teacher started toying with them psychologically and named them. And then they were able to leave immediately. The leader blamed all the mistakes on Wang Tianxia. This case was in big trouble because this person was the teacher's biological son. He forgave and always let them all go. But Wang Tianxia still had to stay and bear the blame. He was still upset because he was beaten by Wang Tianxia. He asked him to leave school. And then at the school gate, the teacher had also heard about this student. He was Chen Hao, who was quite famous in this school except for subjects where it turned out that his performance in other subjects was barely satisfactory. Every time Chen Hao took an exam, he always came first from bottom to top with poor performance. If he acts like a thug, he wants to quit school. The teacher frowned. Wang Tianxia was sweating like this so pitiful that he didn't invite the teacher to hand in the resignation letter.
and after that, Wang Tianxia had to bow down and apologize to him. This Chen Hao couldn't ruin his life, but he didn't know where to go to look for his parents now. Wang Tianxia took out the boy's cell phone nervously and called mother. Teacher saw that Chen Hao's mother was very beautiful and immediately changed his attitude, and she heard that her son hit someone. Instead, she got angry and rushed to hug him. Every day when her son came home from school, people beat him. He was very angry, but without giving justice. Then they gave his son a lesson. He didn't care that he was the headmaster. His words were the best. So Wang Tianxia took the book and walked towards him, preparing to hit. Not to hit him, but to hit himself on the head with a book, with a threat that if he comes out with this face now, his peaceful days will be gone. This is not a threat, but a profitable exchange for both parties. Then Wang Tianxia saw that he didn't look like he wanted to cooperate and waved his hand to prepare to hit him a few more times, to give him more blood seeing that he was too reckless. The new homeroom manager reluctantly forgave him. This time, Chen Hao's mother also discovered that there was what's wrong with him. And then, Wang Tianxia and after him, the mother's voice that came out of his mouth made Wang Tianxia very awkward. It must be because since childhood he never said these words other than fighting and fighting. He was so embarrassed that he had to ask permission to run back to class first. The atmosphere here was even better than outside because everyone in the class seemed to hate him. Wang Tianxia asked where his seat was at this time. A new girl called him to the back of the class at his study table. And then, right next to his, but seeing this table full of scribbles and trash made Wang Tianxia angrily kick it. He wanted to know who caused this. According to his classmate, it was the previous bully Zhong Long. This made Wang Tianxia very angry. If they want to play, he will play until the end. After studying hard all afternoon, all the other children left happily. But Wang Tianxia was not happy at all whether he knew where this child's home was. Shouldn't he sleep on the street? Tonight his stomach is hungry and he will look for something to eat. When he let that happen, the seniors come out to block Wang Tianxia's path to take revenge. Hearing that Wang Tianxia is good at fighting, he personally came to here to avenge his junior. Wang Tianxia threw his school bag directly at him. And then, if you like to be quick and talk, don't talk too much angry talk, he jumped up and punched him. Wang Tianxia dodged everything and then counterattacked. However, because his hands were too short, he couldn't hit anyone else with this shot, seeing that Wang Tianxia could only wave his hand. And then, he looked down on him and took the opportunity. And then, Wang Tianxia kicked him directly. Now the underlings rushed to the him. Wang Tianxia could still knock them out. But this kid Chen Hao's body was too weak. He only hit a little, but he felt like he was going to die. There is Zhong Long. Wang Tianxia approached him and was about to hit him. Only then did he realize that he was scared and lowered his head to apologize to him. Wang Tianxia didn't care anymore and left. If he is hungry, don't fight one more battle to make him even hungrier. This little Chen Hao is also too poor to have a single penny on his body. And then, suddenly, a voice called him. Seeing his face, his friend immediately knew that he had just been beaten. For that reason, Wang Tianxia thought that he had just been beaten once and lost his memory. And then, he couldn't remember where he was, but asked this friend to take him home. He didn't seem to believe it, but fortunately this kid Chen Hao's house was right under his friend's house so he took him home. On the way, standing in front of the house made Wang Tianxia very stressed. He took a deep breath and went in, but no one was home. But Chen Hao's mother was very considerate, before going to work and also preparing food for him. This made Wang Tianxia very emotional, because he understood he was surrounded by all the black gangsters. They look after his daily life for him what to do. Parents are not outsiders. He can only see his father a few times a year, and his mother can only meet him in her dreams. That's why Wang Tianxia is always admired. But other children are picked up by his parents when school was over. It was just a simple thing for other children, but not with Wang Tianxia. After eating, he went to the room. Indeed, as the teacher said, this child Chen Hao was full of chemistry books. No wonder he was so good at chemistry, but put everything aside. And then... Wang Tianxia started racking his brain to think about who killed him. He was about to call Aden, but stopped if this wasn't his real body. Aden didn't believe it was better to come see him in person. 
He went to the bar he often visited when they were still in a normal life. And then, but because of his status as a student, the security guard did not allow Wang Tianxia to enter. He angrily left and vowed to deal with the two of them. When he discovered that, he heard a conversation. It seemed these people were trying to make a scene. Then, when Aiden walked out of the bar in a drunken state, they took out a knife and slowly approached to kill him. Then he couldn't let his little brother be in danger. Wang Tianxia rushed forward and kicked them with this kick enough to make a commotion. Found that someone tried to kill him. He brought Wang Tianxia back to the bar. No wonder Chun Hao's mother was here. Later, a dean sent someone to investigate the murderers just now and found them from the state. At this time, the phone called to inform that people from Kano State were surrounding the hospital. Aiden was shocked and immediately rushed to the hospital, unable to let them hurt Mr. Wang Tian Xia. Wang Tian Xia heard everything but still didn't understand, wanted to follow. But the mother of Chen Hao held him back. He told me too much not to come here. He lost the boy's father and couldn't if he lost his son again, and forced Wang Tian Xia to go home to sleep. And then Wang Tian Xia started to jump. For a while, but many things happened. Why did Chen Hao's mother stay with the fuss of who was this child's father and why did they want to kill him? Suddenly, Wang Tian Xia realized that putting these facts together most likely he hadn't dead. And then Aden said that the situation surrounded the hospital. If so, then it's easy because usually his brothers often go to the same hospital. That he pointed immediately guessed where it was. But the problem was that he had no way to enter the hospital, saw when the this child's mother was sleeping. Then Wang Tianxia jumped down from the second floor and managed to enter as he was running. It was hard to understand the hospital. Only the guild members knew the fact that people of them surrounded the hospital like this could mean there was someone inside in the guild. Wang Tianxia quickly ran into the building, which was a product of society outside of ordinary business. And then the top floor was used as a hospital for the guild. People from the Canton clan stood under the building and shouted, as an excuse to meet Lord Wang Tianxia, a faction as small as the Canton clan who dared to come here to riot, Wang Tianxia was very annoyed that he couldn't go to the main door, so he had to go through the road. The other brothers in the state also started to consider running away, because the guild was completely led by Wang Tianxia to be what it was today. Without Wang Tianxia, he couldn't would be able to do anything. He couldn't let my guild pile up like that. And then... Wang Tianxia quickly went to find his body. There was a guard in front of the door, so he had to go through the ventilation hole. Suddenly saw a girl standing in front of his body, babbling that she was very upset because Wang Tianxia was in a half-life, half-dead state and stating that if he refuses to wake up, he must marry the closest relative to stabilize the guild. Can't let that happen, Wang Tianxia shouted, surprising her. He just jumped down from the ventilation shaft. And then... Out of nowhere, a kid who claimed to be Wang Tianxia, naturally, she didn't believe. She would kick him out to force him to read everything he knew. She was Liu Fei, A.R. Liu Ching Feng's daughter, was known as the queen in town. He mentions weight measurement, hobbies, or even what color clothes she was wearing. It made her angrily kick him in the stomach. However, after that, she thought he was a pervert. Liu Fei Air was furious even though she didn't know who this brat was. She identified him as Wang Tianxia, and everything he knew about her was true. Between them, there were only some things that were only Wang Tianxian who knew. People in the state kept shouting outside the building. At this time, a long-haired man stepped out to stop them. He immediately spoke to Aden. He heard that Wang Tianxia's brother was injured, so he specially brought his brother to here to visit it. But Aden didn't want them to visit, which made him think that Aden didn't want to welcome them. Aden was a little pale when our brothers were too much. He knew very well what they wanted to do to big brother Wang Tianxia, so he definitely couldn't let them on either side immediately got into a fight. When suddenly, Wang Tianxia in the main body came out with Liu Fei Er, making the long-haired Sha Pi scared to be pale already dead, so he came here to cause trouble. And then, how could he appear here like that? Wang Tianxia enthusiastically walked towards his form, hearing that he specially brought his brother to visit him late at night. This even prepared hot chicken porridge, making Wang Tianxia very emotional holding a bowl of chicken porridge in his hand. 
he immediately slapped him in the face, causing him to burn badly and roll down. He saw his brother like that. But he didn't dare to cough at all. When standing in front of Wang Tianxia, Wang Tianxia thought he was sick, so his hands were shaking like that he also didn't want his handsome face to be badly hurt. So he let him lead his juniors back. Then he went back and took everyone celebrating his recovery, arrived at the canoe form of state headquarters. He was very angry and called to blame Assassin for his irresponsible affairs. Obviously, he said he was dead, but he was dead. This made Assassin also somewhat surprised and somewhat excited. While Tian Xia brought brother to the festival, Aden cried. His big brother was fine, made him so happy that he cried. Liu Fei Er had just sat in a corner and watched Wang Tian Xia. She also didn't know what was wrong with Wang Tian Xia. And then, because he was still in the Chen Hao's body two hours ago, Wang Tian Xia woke up in his main body. He put the boy Chen Hao on the hospital bed and then started to explain to Liu Fei Er. She was still very skeptical about what he said, that this kid also he Wang Tian Xia told the rate or everything. After he was hit by a bullet, he woke up and turned into this boy just got hit by one of the shots he fainted, and consciousness returned to his main body. Wang Tianxia himself didn't understand what was happening. All of this was really strange, but what happened today in Wang Tianxia's body, this child could be remembered very clearly. Wang Tianxia wondered whether this child Chen Hao would wake up or not. Right at this time, the juniors came to announce that the country was in chaos, so they stopped arguing here and went to the lobby to settle it after solving the problem they all went to play. And destroyed like that, Wang Tianxia and his brothers decided to do it fighting without getting drunk. In the end, everyone was drunk and lying in a corner. Even when Liu Fei Er woke up, no matter how she called him, he didn't wake up. Even so, he was still dreaming and accidentally touched a place that shouldn't be touched again, angrily punching him in the face. So Wang Tianxia returned to the body of Chen Hao's, Liu Fei Er anxiously ran to the hospital. She covered up the fact that she had just hit him and told him to fall drunk. So Wang Tianxia thought that fainting was a way to change body. He experienced the idea of banging his head repeatedly without seeing any effect. If he can't return to the main body, he continues to pretend to be Chen Hao's in front of the only people who know about this are him and Miss Liu Fei Er. He intends to use this identity to investigate who is behind it. So Wang Tianxia had to continue pretending to be Chen Hao. This young Adin only had muscles. He couldn't be sure that he could pay attention to the matters that needed to be handled in the faction. Before going home, Wang Tianxia gave Liu Fei Er a telephone number. This was someone who he can trust to entrust his body to her care. Everything that happened last night will definitely be a lesson to others not to come to the door to cause trouble again. It's almost morning. And then... Wang Tianxia quickly fell back home before his mother noticed, lying on the bed with his hand on his forehead, thinking that Wang Tianxia must have someone behind his back to control the rest of Kano's gang. But who is this? There is still some time before Wang Tianxia takes an early nap. In the morning, Wang Tianxia is woken up by his mother, although he still doesn't understand why he changed his body with this Chen Hao. But for now, we still have to continue playing the role this well before we can investigate immediately. After he walked down the stairs, his classmates were already waiting for them to go to school together. On the way, he kept reminding Wang Tianxian not to fight, he had just agreed to it, when Zhong Long came again. This kind of thing could not keep a promise. Wang Tianxia took a stand to hit them. Why would they bow down to accept Wang Tianxia as their boss? And then, Zhang Long and the others officially adopted Wang Tianxia as an older brother. They, from today, the name Zhang Long, also specially prepared for the jacket, is a bit overwhelmed, and we just do what we want. Because they are quite famous criminals in school, their submission to him like this caused the girls to start talking before Chen Hao was just an ordinary child. He couldn't believe it could change so quickly. And then, everyone talked too much making Wang Tianxia so awkward that even his classmate became angry and couldn't let this continue, he quickly called Zhong Long's name and reminded him not to do it again in the future. If this person's father saw him, he will mess everything up soon. After they finished talking, the principal apparently blamed them for not coming to class until at that time, 
A cool girl on a motorbike came and answered right next to the principal she was ordering the land who rode a motorbike to school and dyed her hair so that the principal would immediately catch error. And then, when reprimanding the principal, it turns out that Ruolan is his granddaughter. So he is very protective with the reason that Ruolan is half American. It is very normal to dye her hair, standing in front of the principal. The principal doesn't even care. After that, Wang Tianxia returned to class. Everyone in the class saw him and cheered, because he had subdued the delinquent Long Zhong while showing off his classmates, someone patted Wang Tianxia's head. And then, he came to me to ask for the homework assigned to him a few days ago. Wang Tianxia, no matter who he is, if he touches you, he will die. Wang Tianxia grabbed him by the collar, making everyone scream. But it was the weak Chen Hao who, being bullied all day, dared to turn on Elder Li Zhuang of Wang Tianxia. But after that, this class suddenly remembered that he was in the form of a kid named Chen Hao, who was not very outstanding. Wang Tianxia immediately bowed to the others. Everyone left. Once they thought they had changed a little, but turned out to be a trash kid, the same one from before Wang Tianxia tried to stay as calm as possible. After all, it was just a schoolboy prank when it was time to play. The other boys went to tease the girls, and Wang Tianxia collapsed on the table. And then, due to lack of sleep at the moment, Li Zhuang's name came into his head and asked him to go and buy him bread. With lack of sleep, he dared to do this so much that Wang Tianxia couldn't take it anymore. He gave him a punch instead of bread immediately beaten. Name Li Zhuang didn't dare to do anymore but had to hit him from behind. Everyone in the class rolled their eyes. How could the weak Chun Hao do this? No need to pretend to do anything else. After that, Wang Tianxia openly bullied Li Zhuang in front of everyone I sent him to buy bread for me. He saw everything and laughed out loud this kid was very interesting because he hit Li Zhuang. His senior called Wang Tianxia to the roof to talk he didn't long-winded, but straight to the point. This middle school is a group of thugs under his rule. Only a few people dare to fight his juniors. Only Wang Tianxia has the guts. Then because of that, so Sun Xiaodong is very interested in him, he wants to recruit you to his team here. Wang Tianxia can do whatever he wants, and no one dares to come out and stop him, he that is something Sun Xiaodong believes in, if he joins with his guild. Wang Tianxia immediately revealed a confused face. These people were all third-year students studying without studying so freely that I went to war in the guild like this, and later I wanted to go pick up trash. Tianxia didn't care anymore and left this too. His answer to the invitation, Sun Xiaodong then mentioned that you beat Junior Li for this. But after that, he was already responsible to the teacher. If it still felt unfair, he was happy to welcome them after school. Wang Tianxia's strong will made Sun Xiaodong even more interested in him and called his brothers that night after school his friend was afraid. Wang Tianxia would be in trouble for daring to hit another like that. Because having more than one person around will make you feel less anxious. At this time, Sun Xiaodong's friends came, couldn't let his friends be in danger. So Wang Tianxia boldly invited another group to go somewhere else to exchange martial arts. It was very interesting for him to challenge everyone like this alone, as Sun Xiaodong said they immediately agreed. And then, they all dragged each other to the wasteland to settle their disputes, taking the words of that other Sun Xiaodong and passing them on to Wang Tianxia. It was still the same if he joined them, we would instantly become brothers. That he hit the other Li Huan as if nothing had happened. Wang Tianxia laughed at him. We are completely free. Sun Xiaodong's name is already a third-year student by the time he graduates from school. The people here will lose their guards until then. They will, knowing, took this opportunity to step down as his disciple. And then, he was so shocked that they got angry and immediately chased him. The number of enemies was too big, 36 plans to execute as the best strategy. Wang Tianxia ran with his feet around his neck and ran for 30 minutes. But they still couldn't catch him. After all, they contacted that Sun Xiaodong again used a backup plan. Not seeing them chasing again, he dared to stop and inhale. It was Sun Xiaodong and another chubby blonde. And then, the man was already on the way where the juniors brought Wang Tianxia here, just waiting for them to speed up. And wanting to catch him immediately if they launched a motorbike to chase like this, they would be running in the sky. It was Sun Xiaodong who provoked him to have him course. 
Wang Tianxia to join them would not suffer so much running for 30 minutes. Wang Tianxia was completely exhausted, just when they were about to be caught by them. Wang Tianxia. But after that, suddenly Ruo Lan drove to pick him up. The other Sun Xiaodong was about to arrive. This was his only way out. He hurriedly jumped on his motorbike and ran away. Sun Xiaodong and the others immediately chased them. Ruo Lan reminded him to sit down. Firmly, he will speed up jumping on the gas, making him almost fall. Then Wang Tianxia quickly grabbed her body as sticking point how he grabbed her chest, making Ruo Lan very angry. Only now, Wang Tianxia realized she was a girl of this age who would eat and fall on the street no matter what. But now I have to fleeing from pursuit from other police, so I had to release him the name of Sun Xiao Dong and his accomplices in pursuit, who he knew who was helping Wang Tianxia and asked Land Rua to stop. Then, of course, he didn't agree and ran high speed racing down the street, causing the police to intervene, which wasn't good. And the fat man ran to tell Sun Xiao Dong this chase must stop immediately, or the police could arrest them, which was definitely Sun Xiao Dong, with the same fat name separates each child one way to escape from the police. And then, Ruo Lan was still the target of their chase. Wang Tianxia saw the police and jumped up to remind Ruo Lan to go a little faster. The countryside accelerated to overtake the police, but he was shocked when there was a barrier in front of him scared and wanted to destroy his motorbike. But Wang Tianxia stood up to remind him this distance could not stop their only option was to go too fast. Then, in front of the barrier made the land rules afraid to increase the speed of the accelerator, he didn't dare. So Wang Tianxia had to raise his hand and help him, that's how they finally succeeded. But that wasn't the end of the road ahead because the ongoing bridge construction site couldn't stop on time. They can only focus and do a second double fly forward, remembering this reminder from Wang Tianxia. And then, that he had time to prepare for this jump, they managed to cross to the other side of the bridge. But when they landed, the wheel hit a rock causing them to lose their balance and take off their helmets. And regret. When Wang Tianxia realized that he was the principal's grandson, his motorbike burning made Ruo Lan a little regretful, seeing that Wang Tian Xiap promised to buy her a new one. And then he turned to him with a suspicious look. How could such a poor person get any money? Then it's better to just be a good person and let him go. After that, together, they quickly found their way down the bridge. But it would be troublesome for the police to come to here to find them. And then, that night, Sun Xiao Dong just came home from school. When his mother asked him to bring fruit to the book room for his father, his uncle came to play today. How the heck uncle is this guy who got chicken soup on his face by Wang Tianxia? His face is always disfigured, but when asked by his grandson, he avoided it, sitting and chatting happily with his uncle, Wang Tianxia. And then, then when Sun Xiaodong had to pick up the phone, he had followers stationed everywhere who knew that. Ruo Lan had returned home on a motorbike. But the only thing she cared about was Chen Hao. He who was sitting suddenly heard this conversation and asked his grandson about the name. Meanwhile, in the spirit world, Wang Tianxia woke up not knowing where he was. Here he also saw the soul of the boy Chen Hao. Wang Tianxia tried to wake up the child, but he did not respond to it just assuming it was unwilling to return to that world again. This made Wang Tianxia very confused and wondering. Chen Hao held his head. For fear that the world is too cruel for him to have no friends to look down on. Everyone keeps him from coming back again, wanting to give him some advice to stop it. Wang Tianxia is dragged back to the real world. He wakes up in bed, what just happened, just finished lying down, and what's wrong with that kid Chen Hao pours out he thinks Chen Hao's boy is still alive, but he doesn't want to wake up at the same time at the school gate. Then a luxury car was displayed in front of the gate. The salesman saw him coming and immediately called him according to the elder's direction he bought this year's newest model, as a compensation gift for his Ruo Lan. His eyes widened in surprise after all what kind of god was that brat who said that he was a gift. Although the Tianjas had escaped immediate police pursuit, it was not the end of it that they knew which school the racers were going to, and immediately issued an arrest warrant. And then, the principal of standing on top started to beat them psychologically. He asked whoever did it to go and turn himself in. Otherwise, when the investigation expanded, he would be severely punished. Of course, there was no fool who admitted to doing it. The students also knew that this caused by another group called Sun Xiao Dong.
but afraid of being punched in the mouth, no one dared to speak. And then, ignoring him after finishing the propaganda Wang Tianxia was about to go back to class, when suddenly his friend Xia Mei stopped him. He assumed that the racing thing the teacher just mentioned had something to do with him. Wang Tianxia sweated profusely and quickly denied that even though she didn't have a bicycle, where did a motorbike come from? It was reasonable that Xia Mei did not pursue any further, but only reminded Wang Tianxia of their promise that she had promised not to fight again this time. Then Zhang and the others ran. They heard about Wang Tianxia's heroic feat when he fought 30 other Sun Xiaodong's lives alone. Still fine, he vowed to follow him for the rest of his life. Wang Tianxia was too scared to keep his mouth shut. He turned around and saw his friend Sun Xiaodong with an arrogant face, and then he dared to deceive himself. Sun Xiaodong was very angry at this time Ruo Lan also approached to greet Wang Tianxia, according to the other Zhang. For a long time, she was the girlfriend of that other Sun Xiaodong, Wang. This shocked Tianxia as to what they were trying to trap. He ordered to summon him to speak privately. And then, even though he didn't know what this girl was planning, Wang Tianxia still followed her to the backyard to talk without looking at anyone. He asked her to get straight to the point he laughed out loud first, thanking Wang Tianxia for the gift of unlimited supercars. He really wanted to know how rich his family was, saying that the temple was a temple. Wang Tianxia could only laugh and change the topic he mentioned, that he was Sun Xiaodong's girlfriend. Then why does he want to help me rule the land has nothing to hide? He hates bullies so much. No one in school dared to repeat Sun Xiaodong's name like that, before only Wang Tianxia was brave enough to do that, making him a thorn in his eye. Because this made the land of rule feel interesting just saved him yesterday. But not only that he also wanted Wang Tianxia to be able to defeat Sun Xiaodong, it was also better he wasn't too arrogant to hate the school. Wang Tianxia immediately denied that he didn't have time to do something like that. If they don't touch you, you don't touch them because he will go. The ground presses him against the wall and starts negotiating. If he could beat that Sun Xiaodong, then he would become the Wang of Tianxia. He tried to be as calm as possible. After all, being an adult couldn't let this young beauty tug at his soul. At that time, Sun Xiaodong came to be with him and broke up long ago, he announced that from now on, Wang Tianxia will be his girlfriend. And then, Ruolan kissed him, making everyone gasp in surprise, there was the scolding voice of the principal coming to catch them doing lecherous things on school grounds. He made them go to the principal's room to reprimand them immediately. And then, the headmaster cursed continuously, but Wang Tianxia didn't care this made him even angrier, and turned around to scold his ruler. Don't be afraid. Who you like is your business, but he has no right to control it. The headmaster was completely helpless, and he immediately called the principal to solve this case. Because there was no need to call the principal when he heard that his grandson should come here automatically, everything he heard before did not need the principal to summarize again. The principal stepped forward to look at Wang Tianxia, and then waved his cane at him, asking if he had kissed his grandson. Dare to dare to accept Wang Tianxia directly accepted without hiding anything. This personality made the principal a little impressed with him. Then to his nephew who he favored as a young person's business. Even an old man like you couldn't handle it. But he only threatened Wang Tianxia with one sentence. If he did anything wrong to his nephew, he would definitely not forgive him. This aura was similar to his father Liu Fei Er. Made him jump in fright they could love each other. But this is school. After all, he hopes both of them will keep their heads together a little. Wang Tianxia looks like this. Humans are a bit difficult, but the way of being a human is not bad at all. Everything ends here. Even if the principal wants to try again, it is impossible. He angrily swears he will expel Wang Tianxia from this school. After finishing, the two of them took each other back to class. Wang Tianxia didn't want to stay with him for too long, for fear of getting a bad reputation. When Sun Xiaodong came to him, he didn't come to fight his woman who was taken away by someone else. It couldn't just be ignored. He came here to ask for a duel against Wang Tianxia. Ruo Lan also found it interesting and urged the two to fight each other. And then, if anyone wins, he will be that person's first time will also be dedicated to that person. This makes both people spray their noses. 
Wang Tianxia is a little afraid that at such a young age an adult will definitely turn into a fox that he tries to be as calm as possible and refuse the offer to duel something. If they like it, then go and play along. He doesn't care. So speak up to remind him that it means he is not fighting, but admitting defeat. But admitting defeat means that he is physiologically weak. Blood rushed to Wang Tianxia's brain immediately. A man who let girls call his physiological weakness as the most embarrassing thing in his life, Wang Tianxia accepted the men's challenge, can just pat each other. So it's not interesting at all. So Ruo Lan will be the one to set the rules of the first stage. They will be a competition to see who is the top on the block. These two people are not in the same class, so they just need to get highest score. They what tricks he used, he didn't care. Sun Xiaodong, who was excited, wasn't biased against him, who didn't know that this kid Chen Hao was a very stupid one because just felt that he was being played a little painfully when that other son Xiaodong was so confident that he left at this time, Ruo Lan ran down to remind him that the other son Xiaodong was very good at studying, and she heard that he was a little bad student. So this case worked hard to study well to make his Wang Tianxia confused and go when he was alone before his brain jumped. In time, it was clear he should not have accepted the challenge. At first it seemed the body turned into a boy, Chen Hao. The mind also turned into a childish boy. It would be a shame to accept such a ridiculous challenge and lose by being so moved by such a childish provocation. Wang Tianxia opened the book and read it. So when he opened the book and looked at it, his brain hurt. Why are all the math books in English like this? Looking at it over and over again, I don't understand what it is. What should I do to make that girl not look down on him now? Suddenly, he remembered that the headmaster had said that this child was very good at studying. When he opened the book, it turned out he couldn't see anything other than that already satisfied. He accidentally saw a potion in the drawer that looked like a dangerous weapon. Just when he was about to drink, his friend comes. Her name is Jia Mei. Came to her house the other day, I asked her to help me study while studying with Xia Mei. She also learned a lot of things apparently found out that this girl and the boy Chen Hao have been friends since kindergarten. It seems that this is a type of bamboo horse young in the novel. Wang Tianxia put all her brain into learning to do easy homework, and getting it wrong caused Xia Mei to be a little grumpy. And then, the next morning Wang Tianxia brought Sleepless Face to school. She looked quite tired, making her friend Xia Mei very worried during class. She still couldn't concentrate how to deal with that Sun Xiao Dong now. Most of what Xia Mei taught, she couldn't understand right at the end when Zhang Long's children came looking for him. Wang Tian Xia suddenly remembered that this child's father is not the warden. If you can get the test this time, wouldn't you have already passed the test? So Wang Tian Xia grabbed the old Zhang and started calling them good friends, making the children pale. Then Wang Tian Xia started asking for last names. The boy Zhang refused immediately because his father was the real examiner, but he was not the one who gave the exam. Wang Tianxia was angry because they were good friends, so they couldn't help with such a trivial matter. He showed a hint of killing intent. So Zhang Long was immediately afraid that this method was not impossible. He immediately whispered to Wang Tianxia, and it seemed like this method had a very likely success rate. As soon as Wang Tianxia contacted Liu Fei Er for help, Liu Fei Er had also heard about the story. You recently sarcastically came to him to get money to go to the girls. Wang Tianxia tried to explain that it was a force major. He had to change the topic. So that Liu Fei Er could go home to get the pills she found in the child's room, Chen Hao investigated what medicine it was. Liu Fei Er laughed and agreed as soon as the boss asked, but she didn't dare to refuse. But the price she had to pay was quite big. Wang Tianxia reluctantly agreed before taking the exam. Wang Tianxia ran to Zhang and asked again where he asked him to go and make sure it was safe. Zhang Long was very responsible, everything was well prepared. And then, every examiner this time is his father, he will definitely do it. Don't let cheating happen either. He really hates Wang Tianxia. But this case is a bit difficult for him. Wang Tianxia is not afraid, because he has never fought with his bare hands before everyone around witnessed it all feeling like this kid Chen Hao was getting more and more different from before entering the exam. Because this exam is a city-wide exam, Proctor is also very difficult before starting. 
They have to leave all objects that are not related to the exam outside. The exam begins. Wang Tianxia tries to be as calm as possible, compared to fighting other gangs. This exam is more tense. Fortunately, he has prepared his movements. And then Wang Tianxia printed all the life jackets and stuck them inside the shirt with tape. Just take it out and copy it. But why is it so hot today besides... The principal kept standing beside him, seeing that Wang Tianxia was sweating so much that he took his coat. After all, the first steps were no longer lucky, because he still left an effect. After that, for me, Wang Tianxia immediately took out a water bottle with a sticker on it, with all the answers he wrote just by drinking it. The entire bottle of water and the answer will be revealed. Wang Tianxia was about to act when the principal came and took the bottle of drinking water. Soft drinks were not good for health. He had prepared special tea for him. And then, the headmaster kept going back and forth without giving Wang Tianxia any chance to do anything else. And then, the exams were over until the day the results were announced how it was possible that Wang Tianxia was ranked second in the entire block made everyone's mouths wide open but everything hasn't gone according to plan. I should have been first. But I lost to a shy little girl before the exam started. Wang Tianxia had already planned it. He knew the name Proctor would make him difficult in the exam, no matter what it was too difficult to avert. So Wang Tianxia was used in other ways for nothing. That money could not be bought. He took money from the girl Liu Fei Er, who was entrusted to the children to bribe all the students who threatened to threaten his grades. In the end, only achieved second place, which made Wang Tianxian was not satisfied at all. And then, to push him up the rankings was also good enough, perhaps. That other Sun Xiaodong was enough to get first place now. Someone came running to announce the result that Wang Tianxia least expected had come true. Indeed, it was another Sun Xiaodong qualified to get first place in the whole class. It seems that the glasses he is wearing are not ordinary. While thinking, he came to find him, Sun Xiaodong knew that Wang Tianxia played dirty to achieve this result. Because he didn't expect Wang Tianxia was so evil, Wang Tianxia didn't care about his methods, only cared about the results. However, the match was over, and the winner was already his name. Sun Xiaodong didn't accept that he wanted to use his true strength to prove it, but put down newspaper on his desk and left a piece of paper that Sun Xiaodong placed on the Tianjia desk, there was an advertisement for a game shop, and it seemed like he wanted to use this game to decide against you. However, after that, Wang Tianxia immediately asked Junior Zhang to take him to a game shop. This guy knew the area so well, he didn't even tell Wang Tianxia what he knew he told him. Zhang Long could admire the power of the game. Sun Xiaodong others, he is among the ten best players in this region. Almost every game masters every game area in this area whose name has been swept away. Going with such terrifying strength, he is worried about what tactics Wang Tianxia will prepare to deal with him. Then Zhang Long showed how he would invite others to compete with them. Wang Tianxia too immediately refused to do so. It would be very embarrassing. I will fight him on the front line. What's more, how to deal with him once he put the game paper on the table. He already thought of a way the day of the duel has arrived. Then, Ruo Lan changed her form to make Sun Xiaodong's eyes unable to leave her. The man who let Wang Tianxia choose the rules of this match for himself did not tell him to play dirty. So he proposed the scoring rules. Ruo Lan agreed very confidently also, not knowing she set a time for them of one hour, and starting everyone would have 20 cents in hand. The contest started with the name Sun Xiao Dong, very confidently. And then, so that he wished him luck, Sun Xiao Dong understood this game area very well, and then went to the battle area. This was the area that produced the most coins. When he turned around, he saw that Master Wang Tian Xia was still wandering around like a beginner. But only heaven knows how he will use in this fight. Wang Tian Xia came to that yellow machine. The coin pusher machine was famous for allowing coins to go in but no coins to come out. Zhang Long was afraid to remind Big Brother that he could not rely on this machine is for winning. Then, a coin being a coin pusher confused everyone. Even more, usually people would choose the place with the densest density of coins to drop, in the hope that the place would be full of good luck and flow down for them. 
But here, Wang Tianxia chose the place with the lowest density of coins. Wang Tianxia tried to be as calm as possible, not to listen to what they were saying. Your plan was already underway. But if you drop it even a little, it will immediately break while Sun Xiaodong's name continues to fight, and he wins 30 coins in a row. Zhang nervously approaches and asks how much Wang Tianxia's older brother got laughing this game is very expensive. So I just entered, but haven't seen a single coin fall. Zhang, who was shocked for a long time, asked, hurriedly asked, How many coins are left? Wang Tianxia only has one cent left, making everyone laugh time is not over yet. And then, but the coin has been out Wang Tianxia for too long. Zhong urges Wang Tianxia to immediately think of a way Wang Tianxia asks everyone to be quiet. About this last penny, Wang Tianxia focuses on dropping the coin, and everyone is quiet, and see what what happens will happen. The coin falling into the place with the fewest coins makes them think he is lost, but not when the pusher works. It creates between the coins, which accidentally pushes the dense density of coins outside. So Wang Tianxia manages to get the amount very large. Then he explained it to everyone. Everyone's eyes were the same and could clearly see where the coins were stacked. There were dense places. There were less dense places, but each had a success rate of pressing the coins down. Very few people dared to choose a place with a few cents. But for Wang Tianxia, it was the place with the most potential. This was called investment. Wang Tianxia's vision laughed these kids were still too young for him to rule the land looked at it all, and was even more interested Wang Tianxia looked like he had the nerve to be so reckless. While Sun Xiaodong was still running the chicken, his student came to tell him that Wang Tianxia had earned more than 60 cents, and made him really shocked not believe this could happen because his thoughts he disturbed his opponent, so that people had to remind him this made Sun Xiaodong angry and shouted silently. If the opponent wanted to win like that, it would be better if they bet a big game quickly. In the end, Sun Xiaodong still won. But he used his opponent as a place to vent his anger. He was already incompetent. But much babbling and deafening the man was very angry. With his harsh words, when he was about to hit Sun Xiaodong's mouth, he suddenly realized that there was a fat junior next to him. So he patiently went to see that the coin pusher got so much, but Wang Tianxia didn't continue playing to get more of it making Zhang Long very confused and asked him. Wang Tianxia laughed. This guy was so stupid. So everything he gets is taken at this level. If you play more, he will only lose. Wang Tianxia will next play shooting games to get more coins. Wang Tianxia heads to the shooting range. This game equips him with virtual reality equipment. It was the first time he experienced this game. So it was quite surprising how many children's toys. These endings were too luxurious. Everything he saw seemed real. Wang Tianxia was shocked. Before he could get used to the game, the boss started shooting at him. Wang Tianxia quickly found another place to hide. When suddenly another man bit him, the game immediately made the fat man laugh and tease him. Just got into the game and lost. Like that. He didn't like this toy that didn't look like the original. He played it once again to make the fat man gain more momentum and teased him with the skills he would execute. Out of coins, sooner or later, Wang Tianxia, no matter what, what these people are talking about. Because right after that, he made them cross their eyes as he played, sweeping this game more and more frequently. The fat man and Zhang Long couldn't believe their eyes. This was definitely not right. Wang Tianxia continuously swept through the levels of this game very quickly. And then, he reached the final stage. A wall-breaking tank rushed towards him and attacked Wang Tianxia rushed to look for a hiding place. When suddenly he found there was a mortar inside, this must be a hidden item used to pass this level. Wang Tianxia took it and released one gunfire and other tanks immediately scream, so you've reached hellish difficulty. And then, while Ruo Lan was still wandering around to buy water, waiting for the result of the game, the fat man quickly came to report the situation. Currently, Wang Tianxia was still ahead. That coin push game helped him earn a lot of money. But Wang Tianxia still chose the shooter as place to earn coins. Sun Xiaodong still pirates fighting games that fighting games earn coins faster than shooters. So if this continues, Wang Tianxia will be overtaken by Sun Xiaodong. Not much time left in the end who will be the winner. He answered immediately. Commanding very excited Wang Tianxia continued to hit the other shooters. Zhang Long and his friends rolled their eyes. 
because this was their first time seeing a player with such a level of difficulty, Zhang Long himself wouldn't believe it if he didn't see it. Wang Tianxia played like a hack, like a hack because every bullet he shot killed one enemy. Wang Tianxia played continuously and breathed heavily. At least this game helped him earn some pennies. Besides Wang Tianxia, there was also one other person who played this game. He was the same red-haired guy who lost the fighting game against Sun Xiaodong previously. The red-haired guy who wanted to team up with Wang Tianxia, it really bothered him. It wasn't enough for him to earn points alone, but there was one person who wanted to steal points like this. And then, how long did it take him to let what happened in the next stage Wang Tianxia looked straight at the red-haired man who beat him? The moment he entered the game made him very angry. Obviously, they were teammates at the moment Jiang spoke for a long time for his brother. Wang Tianxia alone was enough to handle all the bosses in the game and not needing any more teammates. This made the redhead angry. With his desire to take revenge on Wang Tianxia in the next stage. And then, Wang Tianxia beat him. Zhang Long took the opportunity to anger him. At first, it was a fighting game where that Sun Xiaodong slapped his mouth. Back to the shooter who was kicked in defense by Wang Tianxia, if he was not the male lead, then he stood in front of the acting scene. The red-haired man angrily embraced the feud and went to the past. Wang Tianxia had been trained in shooting by his own uncle. So games like this that are not real guns, he is used to having to shoot up to 1,000 bullets a day every minute, not wasting time fighting. It's time for everyone to focus on checking the coins they all collected together and start counting the coins one by one. Sun Xiaodong's side got 287 coins, and Wang Tianxia besides got 288 more than a penny, making the disbelieving fat man clutch Long Zhang's neck, thinking they were counting fraud. And then, at this time, Sun Xiaodong spoke up to stop his junior. He admitted that this match, Wang Tianxia was the winner. Wang Tianxia was also very humble, so he considered himself a little young. If this match lasted a little longer, he would be the loser. But this match is also very enjoyable. I hope next time, if there is a chance they can still come here to communicate, it seems that the name Sun Xiaodong has a different view of him and accepts this offer. If Wang Tianxia wanted an opponent, he could always serve as a waiter. The game was over. We were all going to invite each other to eat KFC when the red-haired man with a cane rushed to take revenge. Sun Xiaodong noticed it, but it was too late to avoid it. Suddenly, Wang Tianxia rushed to push Sun Xiaodong down and save him. Stick after a while of being insulted by people because of bad gameplay, red-haired guy brought his two mortal brothers back to avenge them. Because he was hit by a straight stick, he gradually fainted in Ruolan's arms. Wang Tianxia woke up daydreaming in the main body. He didn't expect the red-haired man to have such strong hands. One palm made him escape from his soul and fly back into his old body, looking sideways at how Liu Fei Er was lying next to him. Moreover, she was dressed so badly, causing Wang Tianxia's face to turn red. And quickly turning around, Wang Tianxia started to jump over the number he had given to this main body to protect this island. Belonged to the Tianxia Wang Association, very few people knew about this place. Besides, there was also Uncle Zhao to protect, so it was very safe. So why was Liu Fei Er here personally at this time? He woke up shocked to see Wang Tianxia looking at his body in sequence to avoid being slapped. Wang Tianxia had to say kind words that he thought Liu Fei Er was the most beautiful person in the world and the most important person to him. Then immediately changed the topic to the pills he gave her to investigate a few days ago. According to the reports, there seemed to be a real problem with the other pills Liu Fei Er also found out that the people in the guild were selling something called slimming pills. Lying down too long causes pain on this side of the pelvis. Wang Tianxia jumped out of bed to get vitamin D to stay healthy. And then, the atmosphere on this island was very peaceful if possible. He wanted to stay here forever. But the other guilds didn't want him, so he was forced to return before returning. Wang Tianxia hugged Liu Fei Er and promised to remember her panties. Forever this made Liu Fei Er angry and slapped his mouth. Thanks to heavenly Liu Fei Er's slap, he was able to return to the boy's body. Chen Hao saw his friend wake up. Ruo Lan was happy. 
and Wang Tianxia was not happy at all. He was obviously hit on the head. And then, but why does his back hurt apparently? When Sun Xiaodong's entourage was fighting with the red-haired man to avenge him, he accidentally stepped on him, lying on the ground. Ruo Lan was very surprised by what he showed today. Tian Xia was able to take the stick for Sun Xiaodong, something which he never dared to think Ruo Lan approached him and started to explain a little making Wang Tian Xia's face turn red. When her childhood friend Xia Mei went to the hospital, Seeing her arrogant face made Wang Tianxia turn blue with fear. Not because I was jealous of Ruo Lan, but actually that wasn't the case. Sun Xiaodongmi's friend was only angry because she promised not to fight again, but did not keep his promise. Seeing that Wang Tianxia hurriedly explained and dragged Ruo Lan to testify for him, it was also clear that he was the one who was beaten at the same time. Sun Xiaodong also came to help him pay Wang Tianxia for helping him with him taking care of all the bills hospital. And then this way of life was not bad. He was somewhat unpredictable friend Xiaomei standing beside him repeatedly reminded Wang Tianxian not to fight anymore, making Sun Xiaodong not know who he heard saying that he knew that both of them were little ones. Already there were people. Another who was still arguing with her boyfriend named Sun Xiaodong then told Xiaomei about their other fight for her to be determined to win. She, this caused Xia Mei's face to change color, and left Wang Tianxia also having no way to explain. That even if he wanted to chase Xia Mei, he wouldn't be able to, because his back would be broken. Sun Xiaodong was annoyed, and didn't expect Wang Tianxia to be a two-handed fisher. You must have seen the wrong person. He turned around and pulled Ruo Lan onto the boat the same as him. There was still one more match to decide who would win. Sun Xiaodong was angry and swore in this third match that he would make Wang Tianxia lose completely. But while Xia Mei's friend in a very uncomfortable mood was left accidentally bumping into someone who was doing something in the hospital, taking the opportunity to meet people in the hospital, what she wanted to know in which room Chen Hao's boy was not to visit her friend. But the two guards behind him looked fierce. This made Xia Mei a little worried. But in the end, she still showed him the way Sun Xiaodong continued to face Wang Tianxia, but still wanted to have his girl. Wang Tianxia didn't care. Just a child, choose you are an adult. Then select all. Sha Pi, who entered the room, made Wang Tianxia really surprised what he was doing here. Seeing Sha Pai calling Sun Xiaodong as he made Wang Tianxia immediately recognize the two as uncle and nephew, he approached him and asked this time, he heard that he helped Sun Xiaodong with this stick made him very grateful. That's why he brought chicken soup here for thank you. Always chicken soup like this makes Wang Tianxia feel like this guy is planning something else. Wang Tianxia immediately denied that he didn't like eating chicken soup. Suddenly he leaned closer and whispered in his ear, there was no need to be polite because they weren't outsiders either. Wang Tianxia was shocked that this person said that maybe he already knew his identity was too dangerous. Wang Tianxia tried to be as calm as possible. Then he mentioned another transaction with that kid Chen Hao. He gave him a few days to think about it. Before he finished reminding Shap Pai to leave, Wang Tianxia changed so quickly there was no way this guy knew who he was. Maybe what he said now was for Chen Hao's son. His Burmese gang was definitely planning something called Shap Pai. Then his nephew was outside to talk, he heard, that Sun Xiaodong was fighting with Wang Tianxia for another girl, so he asked for help. Sun Xiaodong immediately refused. At this time, Liu Fei Er was bored in the company when she received a message from Wang Tianxia. It seemed like this, he is related to Chen Hao's son, which must be investigated immediately. Wang Tianxia. Then after two days later, Wang Tianxia was finally released, Sun Xiaodong's name came to remind him of their upcoming match. He hoped that Wang Tianxia would prepare himself well as he would not go easy on him, for the savior saw the back of Sun Xiaodong leaving Wang Tianxia also felt pity. If this guy wasn't Shap Pai's nephew, he wasn't bad at all. The message Liu Fei Er sent to him didn't know that Shap Pai and another boy Chen Hao had any relationship, but he definitely troubled Wang Tianxia quickly went home to investigate further. And then, but getting nothing this time, Liu Fei Er called to tell him that she had found out that it was the state of dog burial selling slimming pills. She analyzed the chemical composition of the pills. It did have a real slimming effect. 
but most of the substances in those pills would be highly addictive, stronger than ordinary medicine. This made Wang Tianxia very angry, because he had banned the guild from selling medicinal medicine, speaking out and reminding him that it would cause enmity with others the last time he was killed. But still not spared from Wang Tianxian, he knows what he is doing is dangerous, but times will change if they are not on the right track. He has to get back in shape because for that you have your own way to deal with it. Then, Wang Tianxia starts to find a way to return to his body. He was drunk, but still couldn't see the return. He accidentally slipped a can in a bar called Shap Pai, one child in each arm hugging his juniors. And then, announced that recently, the Wang Tianxia Association was investigating the slimming drugs they were selling. Shapi was not afraid because this matter was hidden well by him, as long as they did not get any information in a while. Sea City would be his, while having fun. And then, suddenly, someone knocked on the door, interrupting his fun. Just as he was about to hit the man on the head, Wang Tianxia kicked the door in. The juniors quickly shouted for the benefit, but seeing Wang Tianxia enter, they sweated Shap Pai was also scared, and quickly ran over direction. Obviously, Wang Wang Tianxia was abroad, but how did he appear here? Casually took a cigar and sat down and started asking about the name Shap Pai. I heard he was selling slimming medicine lately. Coincidentally, after the holiday, he gained a lot of weight and wanted to use the product. Seeing him waver and waver made Wang Tianxia a little. He grabbed him a bottle of wine and threw it at his head and left out the fact that he did not directly attack. Aiden was a little hard to understand tying him up, knowing full well that Shap Pai would never have the courage to face him. There would definitely be someone behind him pulling his strings if he wanted to reveal himself. But after that, he just had to beat the snake to move the grass to Dong. Then Shap Pai was very angry. This time he will play all the time with Wang Tianxia. There is still one more competition between Wang Tianxia with the same name, Sun Xiao Dong. Everyone gathered at one point about this competition. It seemed like a race. The others immediately took everyone to admire his new warhorse waiting for a long time, and not seeing Wang Tianxia made Zhang a little impatient, couldn't wait to see him. Wang Tianxia looked like he was riding a red rabbit. It was at this time that Wang Tianxia came to disappoint everyone. Sun Xiaodong brought himself a racing car, and Wang Tianxia rode a digital car, causing Zhang Long to run over to remind him that this toy car could not be found in the race. With Sun Xiaodong's car, but Wang Tianxia wasn't too worried, because this was the car he trusted to take to the race. It wasn't because he hated Sun Xiaodong, but because he didn't know from the outside when it was time to race, they would know all enough people have gathered. So let's start the match immediately. And then, they all went back to the waiting room to call Ruo Lan to find the fat man lying motionless on the floor. Sun Xiaodong Dong quickly ran to wake him up. The fat man had just been beaten, and Ruo Lan was taken away by someone else. Wang Tianxia was shocked upon learning that perhaps the people who kidnapped him were the two people who had just finished pushing things. Wang Tianxia quickly urged everyone to chase the two people they had gotten into the car and escape. But after that, they all jumped into the motorbike to prepare. The car chase the two kidnappers started to have bad intentions with Ruo Lan. The driver quickly stopped it because their boss specifically told them to take them away and not to do anything. Besides that they also finding Wang Tianxia and Sun Xiaodong chasing them, these brats they could confidently cut off their tails. And then, Wang Tianxia laughed like they were looking down on him. He couldn't follow them so as not to lose track. Wang Tianxia had to take out his secret weapon that he had planned to use in the skyrocketing speed competition, surpassing even Sun Xiaodong finally catching up them. But Sun Xiaodong couldn't follow him, causing Wang Tianxia to start to doubt. After all, whoever did this didn't want to lure him in. Kidnappers took the rule of the land to an abandoned factory. Before he took him in, he left some juniors to deal with Wang Tianxia walked closer to the abandoned factory. He found the car they left there, but what was strange was that he didn't see anyone around. Wang Tianxia tried to be quiet, possible, and approaching the kidnapper's car, he uses his powers to break open the door to save Ruo Lan. But finding that the car is empty, they take the girl away. And then several juniors seemed to surround him as the state boss, Wang Tianxia. Wang Tianxia had learned everything his uncle taught him, an ancient technique known as defensive line. 
which is still used in karate today. This is a very cool martial art that focuses mainly on the speed of its attack power and especially its sharpness in matches where opponents tend to want to kill in just one blow. And therefore, when fighting, Wang Tianxia must remain cool-headed in the accuracy of his attacks. With his firmness, Wang Tianxia must do it many times every day. And this is the time when he has to fight. Wang Tianxia takes a prepared stance to fight the kidnappers they are hunting. To attack Wang Tianxia with knives, thanks to his nimble body, he was able to dodge them all and respond to them only then did he start to threaten them so they would reveal where Rua's land was. At first, they were still very loyal, so it wouldn't work without even a little strength. Wang Tianxia picked up the knife on the ground he had no time to waste. With them, he threw the knife into the air to let it fall freely, then thrust it into the other person's face. Scaring him, he quickly ran away, but Wang Tianxia also knew how to throw knives at the end of the day. He had to admit that actually, he didn't know what his henchmen's goals were, just that they received a mission to find that kid Chen Hao. What Wang Tianxia guessed was indeed that kid Chen Hao found slimming pills, and these Burmese gangsters covet the pill prescription. And then, at that time of the night, at home, Shap Pai was still very upset in his opinion. If you do genuine business, you can earn some dong. He is not afraid of anything, only cares about the results. Once the formula is obtained, many people will support him. At this time, Sun Xiaodong came to ask for help finding Ruo Lan's kidnapper. He said everything to form that what he most wanted to happen was Wang Tianxia chasing him and still not coming back. But after that, Shap Pai smiled and accepted the responsibility to help his grandson and sent the boy out. Sun Xiaodong left the house and still didn't understand why Ruo Lan was kidnapped. There were too many mysteries in this case. He couldn't say that he had to go back and discuss with my uncle more carefully after hearing the information from Sun Xiaodong. The other ship immediately contacted his accomplice, that Chen Hao kid had taken the bait, and he was sure Wang Tianxia would show his face, which he had investigated very carefully. And then, the mother of the boy Chen Hao had a relationship with Wang Tianxia would show her face to help her brother. In this case, she continued talking without knowing that it was Sun Xiaodong standing outside listening to everything. Meanwhile, Liu Fei Er also received information from Wang Tianxia. The recipe was found by that kid, Chen Hao, and he couldn't get it out. He could only go there and rob it. And even with the recipe, he couldn't let it fall into the hands of that sender. Then at this time, Sun Xiaodong contacted and called Wang Tianxia to come down to talk. Sun Xiaodong, who had just met Wang Tianxia, admitted that he lost this match to Wang Tianxia. He already knew that the person who kidnapped girl Ruo Lan was his uncle. This made Wang Tianxia a little annoyed that this person would allow such things. Then Sun Xiaodong was also very helpless, not expecting his uncle to do such things in his family. One hand, Shap Pai took care of everything. If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't be such a jerk. Wang Tianxia left, but Sun Xiaodong said that he had to look for help from Wang Tianxia. Shap Pi had arranged an assassin to kill, so Sun Xiaodong hoped he would remind that person to be careful. The next day, Wang Tianxia went to Liu Fei Er's company. After his secretary brought him to him, he immediately chased him away. This is a very important matter. That's why you should use the status of a child to come here immediately. After they met Liu Fei, Er rushed to blame him for doing something so dangerous that in the top 11 most wanted list it was possible that she had shot him last time, but she was still not afraid to rush into this case. Wang Tianxia knew it all, but he wanted to save his friend Ruo Lan just relying on this kid's identity. Chen Hao was definitely too dangerous for him to go out alone. Even though it was dangerous, he was the boss of this entire sea city. If someone else doesn't dare to do it, he has to show up. Wang Tianxia asked Liu Fei Er to contact Shap Pai again to ask him to come out. He wanted to meet with on the day of the event. All the Shap Pai headphones were placed around the building. After he came out of there, they all found out the information and reported it to their colleagues. He was happy that he had waited for this day for so long. But the people who came to see him were girl Liu Fei Er and boy Chen Hao, which made him very confused. Then, he hurriedly asked why Wang Tianxia didn't come with Liu Fei Er. 
He used the excuse that he and this little friend Chen Hao had a bit of a misunderstanding. So I'll let him deal with this kid first, and then come see him later. Shap Pai sweating profusely, don't know what tricks they are up to. However, after that, he had prepared special wine to welcome Wang Tianxia's boss. But he had not seen the fact that Wang Tianxia did not come here, making him very worried continuously asking Liu Fei Er, where was he? Liu Fei Er took out her phone to seeing that she thought Wang Tianxia came because she was afraid that she would tell Wang Tianxia about something. She immediately took her phone. Liu Fei Er was very angry with this high-handed attitude of her, afraid that she would go crazy. Then Shap Pai had to cover it up by saying that he was too emotional when he heard that Master Wang Tianxia would be here. Today, Shap Pai immediately sent some juniors to fetch Big Brother Wang Tianxia here and told Big Brother arrived Liu Fei. Er wanting to solve his problem with this boy Chen Hao first, Wang Tianxia tries to pretend to be that boy Chen Hao as naturally as possible. He wants to know, where Ruo Lan is being held in Shap Pai is not revealed. But he promised that as long as their transaction was successful, he would guarantee that his friend wouldn't get hurt. Wang Tianxia didn't believe he needed to confirm it first. So Shap Pai took out a tablet with a camera connected to where Ruo Lan was being held. She was still very healthy. He urged her to immediately deliver the goods so he can take the girl home. But after that, he immediately took out a hammer and knocked on Wang Tianxia's head. Angry former, what are you doing? Liu Fei Er smiled and said that the children's story was over. Now they should just talk about adult matters, knowing that he was safe in his place. Locked up, Wang Tianxia has obtained information. A dean brought his uncle here to prepare for rescue. A dean's own people don't believe that Chen Hao's other son is related to Shap Pai. But this person is too cruel that even children will not forgive Wang Tianxia. And then, the matter for the entire state of Wang Tianxia he swore, this time to protect the safe return of Wang Tianxia. The current Wang Tianxia awakened in the main body. Everything is under control. As long as Chen Hao has not given the recipe to Shap Pai that he will not dare did so, whatever he received the sword from his uncle and started his mission to save the people. Wang Tianxia led the brothers to enter the guard place. And then, they still didn't know what to sit down and play cards with. However, they were too greedy for Ruo Lan, which made this Wang Tianxia go crazy. To the point of death, but still happy, he let the commotion lead people to sweep the first floor, and he would took people to the second floor to save people. While Ruo Lan was tied in the room and covered her mouth and couldn't scream, making her very scared and sobbing the sound of people outside made her think someone came to save her, but didn't. And then, the big black man who kidnapped her, he came here with a needle in his hand, thinking it was a good product. The girl was often afraid of getting fat, so he specially brought her super slimming medicine. Roland was afraid and prayed for someone to save her, she leaving the disciples outside to guard them, turning on each other and talking about a kid who dared to come here to save their people. And then, he had prepared so many guards just because they were afraid of this one brat too silly. Another name was easier he was given the task of preparing for the fight. So he was always very careful in his mind. At this moment, Wang Tianxia broke open the door and broke through, making they were pale. He carried a sword and entered while thinking that he was here to clean up the trash that made the guild ugly in Sea City. Ruo Lan was injected with medicinal drugs by the tall man. Her body started to feel strange. Her whole body was helpless and uncomfortable. However, there was a kind of uncomfortable feeling. The tall man who was catching started to mess around, when suddenly Wang Tianxia appeared behind him. He pointed his sword at his head and gave him a piece of advice. If you were him, you wouldn't look back. It seems his wound had just recovered from one shot, and he had forgotten the fear he caused the owl to be so angry. When Wang Tianxia dared to come here that year, he was the one who left a long scar. And then, her face was like this only because one daughter of Wang Tianxia mobilized all her brothers to destroy her faction. Moreover, she left a scar like this on her face. She never forgot that for her, this was an unfair world. What did she do to others as for what Wang Tianxia did to him? He was forced to take revenge. Then the owl took out a knife from his pocket and charged towards Wang Tianxia. His day of revenge had arrived. He had been waiting for this day for a long time and then attacked Wang Tianxia. This guy's speed was quite fast, making him very surprised. 
but that wasn't enough. Wang Tianxia just dodged his attack and started provoking him he didn't understand when he and Shap Pai had that kind of relationship. But there was one thing that he thought these two names were very similar to, namely that both men were the most trash many in the world dare to do that. And also the type of person he hates the most is him. Today, he will kill them all. Shap Pai said he didn't understand what Liu Fei Er meant, but Liu Fei Er didn't believe that Shap Pai really didn't know what he was doing, and asked whether the weight loss medicine formula was concocted by Chen Hao. That's why Liu Fei Er wants 70%. Shap Pai was surprised. Don't think you are boss Liu's son, I, Shap Pai, will be easy to suppress, said Shap Pai. Liu Fei Er then asked if Shap Pai was sure he could negotiate with her. Shap Pai wanted to know how much Liu Fei Er knew. So he asked if Wang Tianxia would accept it, even if he gave 70%, because he hated this the most. Liu Fei Er also said that this was just their agreement. As long as Shap Pai promises, then Liu Fei Er will complete it for him. After he thought about it, Shap Pai would give 30%. That's the limit he can give. Hearing Shap Pai's offer, Liu Fei Er reminds Shap Pai that Chen Hao is on her side. He also said that since Shap Pai could not be king, let the king speak for him. So if Shap Pai doesn't want to, Liu Fei Er suggests to forget it. After he thought about it, Shap Pai asked him to think about it. Hearing Shap Pai's words, Liu Fei Er wondered if over there was finished because she couldn't hold this in any longer. On the other hand, the tall man told Wang Tianxia that slimming pills were not as simple as ordinary medicine. So he intended to show Wang Tianxia his true strength. He then said that he happened to have eaten two capsules and said that at first he wanted to use them to play with the girl, but now he would use them to play with Wang Tianxia. In an instant, the tall man lunged at Wang Tianxia, but Wang Tianxia was still able to act. He realized that his speed and strength were much stronger now. The tall man then swung his knife, but Wang Tianxia was able to avoid it by ducking. But the tall man threw Wang Tianxia away afterward. Wang Tianxia was surprised that the tall man was so strong and wondered if this was the medicinal power developed by Chen Hao. The tall man laughed because he was superior at the moment. In the past, when Wang Tianxia trained by swinging a wooden stick while wearing a three kilograms belt on each arm, Lin Xiao asked his master when he could rest because he was very hungry. After all, he thought doing this every day was pointless. But the master told Wang Tianxia not to rush and told him that if Wang Tianxia did not familiarize his body with every movement, then this would not be easy to use. This movement requires imagination, and the master taught that Wang Tianxia must be able to imagine every enemy movement in order to attack in any condition. Remembering his master's teachings, Wang Tianxia started doing imaginative exercises and closed his eyes. Seeing Wang Tianxia who closed his eyes, the tall man thought that Wang Tianxia had given up. So he jumped towards Wang Tianxia while laughing. However, Wang Tianxia was able to dodge it and counterattack with his sword. The tall man was hit in the neck, so he fainted. On the other hand, Ding Peng had caught another. While lighting his cigarette, Ding Peng was curious as to why Wang Tianxia was taking so long upstairs so he invited two people to come with him to pick up Wang Tianxia. But suddenly, Wang Tianxia's voice was heard telling him not to. While carrying Ruo Lan, Wang Tianxia said that Ruo Lan had been given medicine, so he told them to bring Ruo Lan back and take care of her. Wang Tianxia felt grateful that Mei didn't see him. Not long after, someone suddenly shouted telling Wang Tianxia to let Ruo Lan go. While holding a wooden stick, Sun Xiaodong, who was shaking with fear, told Wang Tianxia to let Ruo Lan go. Seeing Sun Xiaodong's presence made Wang Tianxia curious as to why she was here. Ding Peng also asked Sun Xiaodong what the little boy was doing here. But he was stopped by Wang Tianxia because Sun Xiaodong was Chen Hao's school friend. Wang Tianxia then told Sun Xiaodong that they were entrusted by Chen Hao to save Ruo Lan, and asked him not to worry because Ruo Lan was fine. Hearing that, Sun Xiaodong was surprised because Chen Hao really ordered Wang Tianxia to save Ruo Lan. He wondered what kind of man Chen Hao really was. 
When asked whether he was Chen Hao's older brother by Sun Xiaodong, Wang Tianxia answered yes. He then told Ding Peng to bring people and take the owl and his sword. Hearing that, Ding Peng didn't think that Shap Pai was related to owls. Wang Tianxia thought Shap Pai was ready for all this, so Wang Tianxia told Ding Peng to inform his brother. They finally started to move, but suddenly an owl jumped out of the window and took Sun Xiaodong hostage. After Wang Tianxia and Ding Peng realized this incident, the owl said that they seemed to know this child, so this was easier. Hearing the owl's threat, Wang Tianxia said that he knew Sun Xiaodong, but he didn't know whether Shap Pai knew that he would take his nephew as a hostage. The owl doesn't believe that because he thinks there's no reason for Shap Pai's nephew to be here. Sun Xiaodong, who was in pain, asked the owl to let him go and said that Shap Pai was his uncle, but the owl still didn't believe it and told them to call Shap Pai. This situation was bad for Wang Tianxia because if Shap Pi saw everything that happened here, then Chen Hao would be in danger. So he offered that if the owl let him go now, he would be safe. But if the owl tells Shap Pai, then he will mess with him and take his brother as a hostage, then he should know what the consequences will be. The owl laughed because he realized that Sun Xiaodong was still useful. Because he was annoyed, Ding Peng was about to act, but he was stopped by Wang Tianxia. Since Sun Xiaodong had already helped him, he couldn't let him be killed. After a while, Shap Pai was finally contacted. When Liu Fei Er was about to drink, she was shocked when Shap Pai shouted Wang Tianxia's name. Shap Pai then threw the glass near Liu Fei Er's feet. Liu Fei Er also asked what Shap Pai meant. Shap Pai, who was angry, said that it turned out that they were playing around and wanted to fight him. Liu Fei Er also told Shap Pai to surrender because they all knew Shap Pai's plan. Apart from that, Liu Fei Er believes Shap Pai cannot defeat Wang Tianxia. But Shap Pai didn't think so because Chen Hao was still here. He said that he might not be able to beat Wang Tianxia, but he couldn't guarantee that Chen Hao wouldn't get a headshot. The incident there was being shown by the owl via cell phone to Wang Tianxia. Witnessing the situation over there, Wang Tianxia offered Shap Pai to let Chen Hao go, and he would make sure Shap Pi left Sea City safely. Hearing the offer, Shap Pai said that according to the rules, he had violated the rules. So even if Wang Tianxia did not punish him, he was sure someone else would. Therefore, he knew that he could not leave safely and asked Wang Tianxia if he looked stupid in his eyes. Wang Tianxia also asked what Shap Pi was. Shap Pi just said that he would find out soon. This years-long dispute Shap Pai intends to end. Wang Tianxia told the owl to release Sun Xiaodong if he wanted to be let go. But the owl refused because he wanted to wait until Shap Pai came. Ding Peng also asked Wang Tianxia to go first. But Wang Tianxia couldn't do it because Chen Hao was still in Shap Pi's hands and asked how Ding Peng could explain this to his mother. Ding Peng also said that he would stay and find a way out. But still, Wang Tianxia insisted because he was the boss. He was still here to wait for Shap Pi to come. Elsewhere, Liu Fei Er contacts her father and asks if he will do something about this. His father knew about Shap Pai, but according to the rules of this place, the gang patriarch would not interfere before the results were out. Liu Fei Er then asked what about Kay? It was impossible for someone to Shap Pai to hire that person. His father also answered that it was true that someone from the gang patriarch seemed to want to attack Wang Tianxia this time. But he had already set a no-kill order and he would send Liu Fei Er location K. So he left the rest to Liu Fei Er. Hearing that, Liu Fei Er fell into thought again. Shap Pai finally arrives with his men. Wang Tianxia and Shap Pai looked at each other. Shap Pai then told Wang Tianxia not to be so serious, but he was interrupted by Sun Xiaodong, who shouted for help from his uncle. Wang Tianxia also told Ding Peng to let them go. The owl then asked whether Sun Xiaodong was really his nephew and wanted to give a reason, but Shap Pai said that he had done a good job. Sun Xiaodong became afraid of his uncle. Shap Pai also slapped Sun Xiaodong. He was angry because Sun Xiaodong betrayed him for a woman. Wang Tianxia, who witnessed this, said that Shap Pi was very cruel even to his nephew and asked why he did all this to him. Hearing Wang Tianxia's words, Shap Pi didn't understand what he meant by cruel. He then asked Wang Tianxia if he could rule the underworld of Sea City if he was not cruel. 
This time, Shap Pai invited Wang Tianxia to end their business together. Everyone was able to succeed thanks to them, so Shap Pai asked if Wang Tianxia could be in his current position, if not without them. And now Wang Tianxia wants to destroy his life, so he asks Wang Tianxia not to blame him if he asks for justice. But according to Wang Tianxia, there will be no way out of drug trafficking. He said that it would destroy the whole world. Shap Pai, who was annoyed, asked whether they could still be considered gangsters if they didn't sell drugs. Wang Tianxia finally decides to end all this and offers Shap Pai to let him live. But Shap Pai just laughed at the offer. He said that Wang Tianxia should think about his life first. Wang Tianxia told Shap Pi to stop this and stop being stubborn. But suddenly Ding Peng came and warned that someone was hiding. Shap Pai, who witnessed that, laughed because this meant that more people would be buried with Wang Tianxia. On the other hand, Kei, who was aiming his rifle, laughed because Ding Peng blocked his shot. He called them very naive. Seeing Ding Peng protecting Wang Tianxia, Sha Pi asked if he really wanted to die with Wang Tianxia and said that he would grant his wish if so. When Kei was about to shoot, suddenly he was stopped by someone's voice. Liu Fei Er arrives and says that he cannot kill Wang Tianxia because a no-kill order has been issued. Kei answered that he knew. Liu Fei Er was surprised why Kei still hadn't lowered his weapon. Kei then pointed a gun at Liu Fei Er and said that he didn't like leaving empty-handed when he had come and asked whether Liu Fei Er understood or not. He threatens Liu Fei Er to leave if she doesn't want to die too. Returning to Wang Tianxia's side, Wang Tianxia told Ding Peng to prepare to attack. Ding Peng is still worried about Wang Tianxia, but Wang Tianxia convinces him to trust Liu Fei Er. Seeing Wang Tianxia showing himself, Shap Pi asked if Wang Tianxia still had anything he wanted to say as his last words. Wang Tianxia also smiled. While unsheathing his sword, Wang Tianxia said that the chicken soup he made was very disgusting. Gunshots were heard. Hearing that, Shap Pi immediately grinned, and Ding Peng became worried. But the shot only grazed Wang Tianxia's cheek. Wang Tianxia asked if this was all he had, and ran towards them. Shap Pai also ordered his subordinates to kill Wang Tianxia. Wang Tianxia then pushed his way through the crowd while defeating them one by one. When one of them lunged at Wang Tianxia with his knife, Wang Tianxia only dodged slightly and kicked the person's head as a counterattack. Next, he tackles the next opponent and kicks the rest in the head. Wang Tianxia finally defeated them all. Ding Peng came to Wang Tianxia and reported that Shap Pai and the Owl had run away with Chen Hao. Wang Tianxia knew that, but he deliberately let them go. Ding Peng did not understand why Wang Tianxia would let them go. Wang Tianxia then said that he wanted to know who was behind all this. On the way, Wang Tianxia asked Uncle Zhou who he thought was the person behind the scenes. According to him, he estimates that there was interference from members of the Patriarch's gang hearing that Wang Tianxia became interested. However, Uncle Zhou warned Wang Tianxia to be careful this time. Wang Tianxia also accepted the warning and said that he had to sleep for a while. So Wang Tianxia left matters here to him. In addition, Wang Tianxia asked if his acupoints would hurt. Uncle Zhou also convinced Wang Tianxia to calm down and said that they would always follow Wang Tianxia. On the other hand, Shap Pai is running away with Shap Pai. The owl asked what they would do now. Because in City C, Shap Pai didn't have any more space. So Shap Pai said that he could only leave it alone for now. However, he invited them to go first to their partner's place and see how they arranged it for them. The owl then asked what happened to Chen Hao that he brought. Since Chen Hao is no longer useful to him, Shap Pai says that they should find a place to dump Chen Hao. Before long, Chen Hao finally opened his eyes. By midnight, they had arrived at an old factory that was no longer in use. It was very quiet and desolate. Then they both got out of the car to check around the place, walking slowly while observing the surroundings. The bald-headed man asked Shap Pai if this was really their destination. Then Shap Pai convinced the man that this was the place. But the bald man was surprised because no one welcomed them. After that. Shap Pai took out a cell phone from his pants pocket. 
He called someone, and a moment later, someone picked up the phone. Chen Hao, who was in the car, could hear the voice behind the phone, and he felt like he was familiar with the voice. Then the figure behind the phone said that they were a gang of little dogs that wouldn't be able to fight Wang Tianxia. Hearing that, Shap Pai immediately became furious. He did not accept what he had just said. Shap Pai realized that his gang was only used as bait to test Wang Tianxia. The figure behind the phone said that if Shap Pai already understood how to overcome Wang Tianxia, then the man would not be able to become the boss. Shap Pai instantly became very angry and clenched his fists. Shap Pai snapped at him, saying that if it wasn't for the stupid assassin, he arranged then Wang Tianxia would be dead. But the figure behind the phone said that it was Liu Qinfeng that made him so unable to move forward, plus the accident made him unable to win. Then the figure behind the phone also told him that there was Zhou Lao Gui there, so that with that man, Shap Pai, would not be able to win. Chen Hao, who was peering through the car window while listening to their conversation, couldn't believe that the person behind the phone also knew Uncle Joe. Chen Hao wondered in his mind who exactly the figure behind the phone was. Then, Shap Pai directly spoke to the point. He told the figure behind the phone to arrange a way for him to leave and promise to keep his secret. But the response from the person laughed. He said if he could keep his own secret, and said if Shap Pai would die. Knowing that Shap Pai was immediately surprised, as well as the reaction of Chen Hao who was in the car. Chen Hao widened his eyes because he realized that this was a bad thing, because the mysterious figure would kill the man. Immediately, Shap Pai gave orders to the bald-headed man to immediately get into the car. Quickly, the man stepped on the gas to get away from that place. Unexpectedly, it turned out that on the floor of the place had been installed a trap device that made the car lose control. In the end, the car hit a wall and rolled over. The black car was emitting smoke. Chen Hao was seen trying to get out of the car through the broken window. Chen Hao crawled with all his might. Then he approached Shap Pai, who was still trapped in the car upside down. Shap Pai's entire body was covered in blood from the accident. Chen Hao, who saw the man's condition, was immediately hysterical and called him by name. Chen Hao tried his best to pull the man out and even tried to lift the car by himself. But still, he didn't have the strength to do so. In a stammering tone, Shap Pai told Chen Hao to run and leave this place. He left a message for Chen Hao to convey his apology to Wang Tianxia and also begged to let Xiao Dong go because he was the only person Shap Pi loved. Hearing that made Chen Hao feel sad, and he promised to do what Shap Pai asked. Shap Pai did not believe Chen Hao's words that he was Wang Tianxia. Then Chen Hao convinced him once again and said that he would promise him. Hearing that, Shap Pai was silent for a moment and was speechless. Then he smiled until he finally lost consciousness. Then she assured him that what Wang had promised would definitely happen. Chen Hao could only sit beside the car and was saddened by the man's departure. Suddenly there was someone who approached him while holding a gun in his hand, and the person had heard all the secrets he had just said. Three hours ago, before the incident, Liu Fei Er was confronted by a woman wearing a green vest with a gun in both hands. Liu Fei Er tried to defend herself with a knife weapon. Seeing that, the woman in the vest laughed because she didn't think that Liu Fei Er could defeat her gun with just a knife. Liu Fei Er was not deterred by that as she was determined not to let the woman hurt the person. The woman in the vest stares at Liu Fei Er and then instantly says that she likes her looks so much that she plans to make Liu Fei Er her woman. Hearing those words made Liu Fei Er very confused as to what she meant. She then chuckles, saying that there is nothing wrong with women liking each other. Then, Liu Fei Er reminds her that she won't be able to take her heart even the person who has been chasing her can't get her heart. She guessed that he meant Wang Tianxia and became curious about him. The scene back where the woman in the vest had been appeared before Chen Hao, who was sitting beside the overturned car. The woman did not expect the godfather king of the underworld to have such a secret. Chen Hao seemed to ignore her presence and said that this had nothing to do with her. Then the woman slowly approached him because she was sure that she had just heard the confession that the man was Wang Tianxia. 
Since there was a person who told the woman to kill Wang Tianxia, then it belonged to her business. At the same time, the woman pointed her gun at Chen Hao. Realizing the woman was pointing a gun at him didn't make Chen Hao panic. There was liquid dripping from the engine of the overturned car. Che Hao said if he was going to tell her a secret, then she should let him go. The woman just smirked and still pointed the gun at Chen Hao. Then Chen Hao told the woman to look at something underneath. Chen Hao was already prepared holding a lighter in his hand. As the woman looked down, she was shocked to realize that it was gasoline. Chen Hao did not think for a long time and immediately turned on the lighter that was already in his hand and threw it towards the gasoline liquid that was right below the woman standing, thus creating a very powerful fire explosion. They both then ran away from the flames. The woman fell and collapsed on the floor. Then Chen Hao stepped slowly to ascertain how the woman's condition was. Chen Hao realized that what he did earlier was very dangerous and thought that the woman was dead. But unexpectedly, the woman immediately got up and took the gun back and pointed it at Chen Hao. The woman had many wounds on her body. Her shirt and pants were also torn from the explosion. She didn't expect that the man would dare to bet in this condition. Then the woman fired a shot and the bullet passed right beside Chen Hao's face. Instantly the man just froze, looking at the bullet that had just passed through him until it hit a little of his hair. In his mind, he did not expect this woman's action to be so serious. The woman then smiled at Chen Hao, who was Wang Tianxia, and said that she would let him off the hook this time. Seeing this made the woman a little surprised. Then she left, leaving Wang Tianxia who was confused at her behavior. Wang Tianxia was astonished and wondered if the woman had come to kill him and why she was now just leaving. The woman went to the basement and changed the clothes in her car. Not long after, her phone rang indicating that someone was calling her. Not thinking for long, the woman picked it up immediately. The figure behind the phone asked if she had completed her task. Then the woman answered that Shap Pai and his men could no longer speak. The mysterious figure behind the phone praised her for completing it perfectly. It was the end of their cooperation, so the woman could do what she wanted now. After she turned off the phone, the woman remembered Wang Tianxia. She became a little interested in the man's figure. In the evening, Wang Tianxia walked out onto the highway from within the forest. He looked very tired from the events he had experienced today. It wasn't long before Liu Fei Er shouted out for him. The woman galloped over to him and immediately hugged Wang Tianxia's body. She was very grateful to be able to see him. After that, they then immediately got on the car to leave from there. It seemed that the atmosphere on the road was very quiet, so their car was traveling at high speed on the road. In the car, Wang Tianxia looks gloomy. He asked Uncle Zhou, who was sitting behind him, to arrange a funeral for Shap Pai. After all, Shap Pai was a brother in arms with him. Then, Uncle Zhou immediately accepted the order and would take care of the matter. Then Wang Tianxia advised Liu Fei Er that in the future they should think about it well because no matter who the opponent is, they must remember death. Inside a high-rise building were Ding Peng and Sun Xia Dong, who had just reached the 28th floor. The two of them immediately walked down the hallway of the building. Sun Xia Dong, who was behind Ding Peng, walked after him while observing the surroundings of the building. In his mind, Sun Xiao Dong felt that Wang Tianxia's headquarters was no different from an office building. Then they had arrived in front of a room and immediately knocked on the door to enter the room. Inside was Liu Fei Er who was seen relaxing on a sofa chair while reading a magazine. Then Ding Peng reported to her that he had brought someone. Liu Fei Er guessed that it was Sun Xiaodong. This was confirmed by her. Without further ado, Sun Xiaodong asked about his uncle's whereabouts. Hearing his question, Liu Fei Er immediately turned her face away. She said that his uncle had gone missing from Town C. Then she also told him that Town C was where their worlds met, and that his uncle had left and would not return. Hearing that made Sun Xiao Dong shocked. Realizing that his uncle would never return instantly made him become sad and bow his head. Because of this, Liu Fei Er offered Sun Xiao Dong to become the leader of the bereavement gang and asked about the man's response. 
Sun Xiaodong was immediately shocked and widened his eyes. He really did not expect his uncle's gang to be given to him. Sun Xiaodong felt insecure because he was just a high school student and it was impossible for him to lead a bereavement gang. Liu Fei'er assured Sun Xiaodong that he did not have to drop out of school just because he entered the underworld because his job was just to find some people to take care of the bereavement gang temporarily. Afterwards, Liu Fei'er gave the man a book to study and asked him to understand the contents carefully. But Sun Xiaodong still did not believe this. Out of curiosity, Sun Xiaodong asked, what was the reason the woman chose him to lead the bereavement gang? The reason was very simple, because Liu Fei'er wanted the man to help her to protect people, and the person was a figure that Sun Xiaodong recognized. Suddenly Wang Tianxia in the form of Chen Hao came to greet Sun Xiaodong from behind. Liu Fei'er explained that Wang Tianxia would help Chen Hao secretly. She told him that this matter was actually very confidential. But Chen Hao could trust him, so the matter was left to Sun Xiaodong. Liu Fei'er hoped to him that he would not let them down. Hearing that made Sun Xiaodong become speechless for a moment. He then tries to convince Chen Hao that he trusts him and will not be afraid that he will betray him because of Ruo Lan. Chen Hao replied casually that at least Ruo Lan was safe because of him, and if Sun Xiaodong betrayed him, then he might do something to him. Sun Xiaodong finally accepted the offer, but he asked them for one condition. Since their previous match was canceled, Sun Xiaodong did not want to give up so easily. Wang Tianxia finally agreed, suggesting that the match be made fair. Liu Fei'er invited the man to leave and told him that Aiden would help him solve his problem. After the man left the room, Liu Fei'er pinched the boy for arrogantly asking for a rematch with Sun Xiaodong. Then the woman stood up and walked towards the window of her room. She looked at Wang Tianxia and asked if he would really do that. Wang Tianxia argues that he just wants to please Sun Xiaodong. Then he reminded her that they were in Ming and the enemy was still in the shadows. Only by utilizing Chen Hao's identity could the enemy in the shadows be pulled out. But Liu Fei'er was a little worried as Chen Hao was still only 16 years old. Wang Tianxia reassured her, considering he debuted as a boss at the age of three, then there was no harm with those who were 16 years old. Full of confidence, Wang Tianxia is determined to shake the world again. Liu Fei'er looked over at Wang Tianxia who was right beside her left. She stares at the man's face for a moment. Then she recalled that she also met Wang Tianxia at the age of 16, and even now met him again at the age of 16 and fought with him again. They both stared out the window of the room. It was a sunny afternoon and the sky was slightly cloudy. At school during break time, Chen Hao walked out of the school building after finishing his first class. The man felt like yawning because he was bored after his class. Suddenly in front of him was a group of men who called out to him. They had not seen Chen Hao for a long time and finally met again at that moment. One of the men already knew that yesterday Chen Hao was against Sun Xiaodong. They defended his senior and said that his senior lost because someone interfered. They all tried to harass Chen Hao. Suddenly Sun Xiaodong came up to them and stopped them. With an angry expression on his face, Sun Xiaodong asked what they were doing to Chen Hao. One of the three men tried to explain that they only wanted to defend him because Chen Hao won the fight due to cheating. Instead of being happy to be defended by them, Sun Xiaodong's response was very rude and said that the matter had nothing to do with them. Sun Xiaodong then called Chen Hao brother and escorted him to class. Seeing Sun Xiaodong do this to Chen Hao made the three men very surprised and could only remain silent. The two of them walked in the hallway of the school building towards their class. Wang Tianxia glanced at Sun Xiaodong with a smile. He felt happy because he could finally feel what it was like to be a boss again. Everyone was subservient to him and respected him. No one would dare to go against him anymore. In his mind, he felt very satisfied because he was too happy thinking about it that he didn't see the road in front of him. Finally, Wang Tianxia accidentally bumped into a woman. He immediately bowed his head and apologized. Then the woman immediately called his name. Hearing that woman's voice startled him because he was very familiar with that voice. When he looked in front of him, 
he was even more surprised to see Shun Kei in that place. Feeling very curious, Wang Tianxia asked why she was in this place. Then the woman brought her face closer to Wang Tianxia until the distance was only a few inches. The woman didn't expect that the man still remembered her, she said as if she was teasing the child. But a moment later, Wang Tianxia tried to move away and then in a snapping tone, the man asked what she was doing in this school. Shen Kei ignored him and left the place. Wang Tianxia stared at Shen Kei's departure feeling annoyed and in his mind wondered what she was up to. Sun Xiaodong, who was behind Wang Tianxia, just watched her and didn't say much. In class 1.3, all the students sat neatly in their seats. And then in front of the class, there was the principal standing together with the woman Wang Tianxia had met in the school hallway earlier. The principal announced to all the students in the class that teacher Wang could not come to school because he was sick. So he replaced him with a new teacher to teach in their class. Suddenly, Chen Hao, who was sitting in the back seat, immediately stood up and protested. He said that the woman was not a teacher. The principal was immediately angry at Chen Hao's disrespectful behavior. The director snapped at him, asking what he was doing. Then he warned Chen Hao that he would be given a warning letter as well as calling his parents again. In response, the woman next to him looked at the director with a smile. The woman tried to calm the director's anger and said that if Chen Hao was like that, it was probably because he was not ready to have a new teacher. Finally, the director was persuaded by the woman and understood Chen Hao's attitude. After that, the woman finally began to introduce herself in front of the class. She was Shen Kei who was going to be their acting teacher. She asked for her cooperation to all the students in the class. At the back of the school building where people rarely walk, Wang Tianxia and Shen Kei were facing off. Wang Tianxia took her to get clarification from the woman. He told her to tell him the real reason she wanted him to do it. Wang Tianxia did not know how Shen Kei had gotten into the school. The man would not let the woman get away with it. Shen came closer to Wang Tianxia. The woman thought that Wang Tianxia was afraid of her presence. Then the woman teased him and remembered that the last time they met, the man was very brave. In a snapping tone, Wang Tianxia asked her again what she was going to do, then told her to answer seriously and not talk much. Finally, the woman answered that she wanted Wang Tianxia to kill someone. Hearing that made Wang Tianxia very surprised, and the look on his face was very panicked. Even though Wang Tianxia knew that the woman used to do that, then asked Shen Kei why she had to tell him to do that. Then Shen Kei admitted that she couldn't shoot that person. She also couldn't order people from the assassins list, so Shen Kei could only look for Wang Tianxia. But Wang Tianxia refused, because that matter had nothing to do with him. After all, he had not come out of the underworld for a long time. Wang Tianxia immediately turned around and left the woman while saying that his problem also had nothing to do with her. At the same time, Shen Kei took out her cell phone. She showed a photo of the woman who was Chen Hao's biological mother. Seeing that made Wang Tianxia stop and immediately turned around to approach the woman. He had an angry look on his face as he realized that she seemed to be threatening him. But Shen Kei denied it and said that it was impossible to threaten the big boss of the underworld. Shen Kei told him that this had a lot to do with that woman being Chen Hao's mother. Shen Kei folded her arms across her chest while saying that she would be willing to help that woman as long as Wang Tianxia was also willing to help her. Hearing this, Wang Tianxia still didn't understand and asked what she meant. Then Shen Kei closed her eyes and took a breath to try to explain it to Wang Tianxia. Shen Kei told him that someone would deal with that woman. Wang Tianxia furrowed his brows. The two of them looked at each other with a sharp look in their eyes. Not long after, Wang Tianxia decided that he would help her. The nighttime atmosphere on the highway was not so crowded. A red car car drove quickly and overtook several cars in front of it. Inside the car were Wang Tianxia and Shen Kei. Chen Hao asked her who was targeting Chen Hao's mother. Realizing that the man was panicking, the woman snapped him out of it and said that he was a gang leader. It did not sound like the legendary Wang Tianxia who used to kill with just a wink. Wang Tianxia said that since he used this child's body, 
he felt responsible for him. Moreover, Chen Hao's mother was a friend of Ding's and they were practically family. The woman felt curious and interested in what happened to him and asked if it was some kind of transmigration and spirit delivery or something. Then the woman looked at Wang Tianxia and explained that as long as Wang Tianxia was willing to accept all her conditions, then she would tell him everything she knew. Wang Tianxia said that he agreed to help her, but if it was to kill someone, then he wouldn't be willing to do it. Wang Tianxia didn't like the threat that the woman gave. Although Shen Kei wouldn't say it then, Wang Tianxia had his own way to find out. Then Wang Tianxia glanced sarcastically at the woman while saying that he wanted to see who was trying to seek his own death. After a while, they finally arrived at a bar owned by Chen Hao's mother. His mother was a little surprised by her son's presence in that place. Chen Hao felt hesitant to say it. Chen Hao's mother saw Shen Kei beside her son and thought that she was Chen Hao's girlfriend. Then Chen Hao straightened it out and said that the woman was a teacher at his school, hearing that his mother felt bad because of his words. Then Shen Kei introduced herself and told Chen Hao's mother if she was Chen Hao's teacher, who was visiting all the students' parents. While the two of them were chatting, Chen Ha asked permission to go to the bathroom. Wang Tianxia walked down the hallway in that place. He looked around the room, carefully hoping to find something. Wang Tianxia instantly remembered Shen Kei's words, saying that she only knew that someone had planted something illegal inside her bar and didn't know more about the details of the location. The expression on Wang Tianxia's face was so serious, he thought that the method used was quite sloppy but very effective if used against ordinary people. He suspected that they were hiding it in a private room. Because according to him, if they wanted to trap someone, then they wouldn't place it in a place that was often entered or visited by many people. Therefore, Wang Tianxia guessed if they would place it in a place that was very difficult to find. Instantly, Tian Wanxian remembered that there was a very hidden private room where not many guests could find it. Then he started walking towards the room to check it out. After a while, he finally arrived in front of the room. Without thinking for long, Wang Tianxia immediately opened the door and entered it. Fortunately, there was no one around, so there was nothing to prevent him from entering. Wang Tianxia peeked into the dark room as there were no lights illuminating the room. Wang Tianxia immediately realized that the room had been renovated into a wine storage warehouse. He immediately looked around the place. Very quickly, Wang Tianxia checked every corner in the room and he still didn't find anything there. But there was one cardboard box that he hadn't opened yet. Wang Tianxia immediately checked inside the box and saw several bottles of wine and a box covered in paper. Seeing that suspicious thing, Wang Tianxia immediately opened the contents inside. Because he was curious, Wang Tianxia finally tried it directly. Wang Tianxia was surprised to find out that it was heroin. Tianxian felt incredulous that they would do this just to trap a woman. But if he thought about it again, maybe they were targeting Ding Peng. The thought of that made Wang Tianxia very furious. There was the sound of someone's footsteps from outside the room walking toward the room. Instantly, Wang Tianxia realized that outside the room was a group of men. One of the men wearing a hat told the man beside him named Bai that they had used all the stocks so the enemy would definitely fall. Bai then ordered the man to check again to make sure he hadn't made a mistake that would cause trouble. When they arrived at the door of the room, they saw that the door was not closed. Then he furrowed his eyebrows and guessed that someone had entered the room. Not long after that, they all went inside, observing the surroundings of the room carefully. Bai immediately took out the knife blade he kept in his back pants pocket. While holding the knife, Bai threatened someone inside to come out because if not, then he would not hesitate to harm him. Then the atmosphere became silent, and he got no response. Then Bai ordered his men to check all sides of the room. Wang Tianxia was hiding behind a stack of wine boxes. It could be seen that his face became a little panicked for fear of being discovered. It was actually easy for Wang Tian to defeat those people, but he thought that if he made a scene in that place, then Chen Hao's mother would be in big trouble. Suddenly there was the sound of clinking wine bottles from behind Wang Tianxia's hiding place. Wang Tianxia came out of his hiding place. 
He acted as if he was someone who was drunk. Wang Tianxia was seen grinning to convince the men that she was drunk. He claimed that he didn't drink alcohol and told the men not to tell his mother. Bai, who saw Wang Tianxia, was confused about who his mother was and even more so who he really was. The man wearing the hat immediately told Bai that he was Qing's son. Then his men asked Bai what they should do to him. Bai thought that if the child was lost, then they would be in trouble, so he decided to just take him out of the room. Then Wang Tianxia staggered out of the room. The man in the hat told him to drink somewhere else in the future and forbade him to return to that place. After Wang Tianxia left, Bai asked his men about the item. Then his men assured his boss that the item had been placed as he requested. The man in the hat then asked Bai if they were going to stay in there. Hearing that question made Bai a little annoyed and said that he was very stupid. Because if they were in there, then the police would think that they were hiding the drugs when they came to check the place. Bai said that they were just watching the show from outside the building. Behind the wall was Wang Tianxia who was grazing. He was watching the movements of the group of men who had just come out of the room earlier. Then, Wang Tianxia hurriedly took out his cell phone from his pocket to call Liu Fei Er. After the phone was picked up, Wang Tianxia told the woman to bring Ding Peng to the drunken bar as soon as possible because there was an urgent matter. There were many police cars in front of the bar. Then the policeman came up to Chen Hao's mother and asked if she was in charge of this bar. The policeman told her that they got a report that some contraband had been hidden in this place. Then the policeman showed his warrant and said that they would search all the rooms in the place. The policeman also asked Chen Hao's mother for her cooperation. Hearing this, Chen Hao's mother was shocked and did not think that there was contraband in her place. The police chief ordered his men to conduct a dispersed search for the goods. Wang Tianxia, who saw the incident, became very panicked. Behind him stood Shun Kei, who told him to quickly find the item because there were many policemen there, and they would definitely put effort into this matter. Wang Tianxia immediately told the woman that there was about a kilogram of drugs in this place. If those policemen found it, then not only the place would be confiscated, but also the people would be taken away. Wang Tianxia looked very panicked because of that. Shen Kei just chuckled and said that it was really brutal. Shen Kei looked over at Wang Tianxia and asked what he would do under these circumstances. Shen Kei believed Wang Tianxia that this matter was not a big deal to him, considering that he was a very famous person in the underworld. Wang Tianxia turned his face, then said that maybe this matter was nothing to Wang Tianxia's figure, but now he is Chen Hao. That was why Wang Tianxia needed Shun Kei's help. Seeing Wang Tianxia begging her, Shun Kei said that the conditions she gave him still applied. If Wang Tianxia was willing to kill someone for her, then she would do whatever that man ordered. But Wang Tianxia remained firm with his stance. Wang Tianxia promised to do anything for the woman but refused if her request was to kill someone. Instantly, Shun Kei perked up and offered what she could do to help him. Shun Kei felt very ready, even if she was asked to kill everyone there. Then Wang Tianxia took the woman to the beverage storage room. Wang Tianxia said that he would try to get rid of the item first, before the police came to check the room. There was a man wearing a t-shirt with a skull on it, while smoking a cigarette standing guard at the door of the room. Wang Tianxia said that the guard had seen him last time so he couldn't go inside, and if he broke in, it would only attract the attention of the policeman. Hearing that, Shen Kei already understood her duty. She would take over the task. Shen Kei held her gun, and she looked very confident that she could defeat them no matter how many there were. Then she looked at Wang Tianxia and reminded him of the promise he gave her if he would do anything for her other than killing someone. Wang Tianxia was speechless and silent. Shen Kei walked up to the man guarding the door of the room. With Shen Kei's beautiful face, she could flirt to distract the man. Shen Kei asked the man for time to talk to her. Seeing the beautiful woman in front of him made the man instantly mesmerized and immediately engaged her. At the same time, Shen Kei pointed her gun at the man. There was a gunshot from inside one of the rooms in the bar. Seeing Shen Kei's action made the man very surprised. Then Shen Kei yelled at the man to calm down and not make a scene. 
Shen Kei told the man to immediately call his boss and say that someone had found the item. In Shen Kei's mind, she really wanted to see the extent of Wang Tianxia's ability. Not long after, Bai arrived with the policeman. Bai led the way to tell the policeman his location. One of the policemen realized that Bai was the one who had made the report. It was confirmed by him because he admitted that he saw someone being sneaky and looking like a bad person. Then the policewoman reminded him that if he made a false report, then it was a crime. Bai tried to convince the two policemen and said he was a good citizen who obeyed the law. After a while, they finally arrived at the door of a room. Bai pointed at the room in front of them and told the two policemen that this room was the place of someone he suspected. Not thinking for long, the two policemen immediately broke down the door of the room and found Wang Tianxia. Suddenly, the bottle of drink and a box he was holding fell because he was surprised by the arrival of the two policemen. The policeman pointed a gun at Wang Tianxia. The policeman did not expect him to be a child. Then Bai quickly picked up a box dropped by Wang Tianxia to give it to the two policemen. But Wang Tianxia protested and said that it was his box, so he yelled at Bai to return the box immediately. Hearing that, Bai smiled slyly. Confidently, Bai gave the box to the police and said that it was the evidence of the suspect. Then the policeman told his men to bring the evidence and the boy. At the same time, suddenly came Chen Hao's mother along with Ding Peng. They were both very surprised to see the situation. Then Ding Peng stopped the two policemen from taking Wang Tianxia and asked them for an explanation. The policemen explained that they had received a report that someone had hidden illegal goods in that place. The policewoman also added that they had just found contraband on the boy, so they would take him to the police station for further investigation. But Chen Hao's mother didn't believe it because he was just a kid and couldn't have done it. The woman looked very panicked. Hearing that, Bai immediately agreed with her. Then he thought that there might be someone else who did that while glancing at Ding Peng. Ding Peng only glanced at the man, then told him to stop talking nonsense. The policewoman told her men to take all the staff to the police station for further investigation. At the same time, Wang Tianxia tried to stop them. The man said that the box was not a drug. The two policemen then looked at him seriously and asked the truth. Then Wang Tianxia advised the two policemen to open the box and try it directly so that they could be surer. The policeman immediately followed his advice. He took a little powder on his index finger and tried it. The policeman suddenly became surprised when he realized that it was just milk powder. Knowing this, Bai immediately protested. He said that he was sure it was drugs. Then Wang Tianxia casually asked the man how he knew that. Wang Tianxia grinned at the man. Immediately, Bai could only fall silent in panic. Bai realized that he was so careless that he fell into the boy's trap. Then Bai tried to explain in a stammering tone that he saw for himself that the boy had smuggled illicit goods in the room several times. Bai accused Wang Tianxia of hiding the goods. Then Wang Tianxia pretended with his innocent face, saying that he was indeed hiding a lot of things in this room. Then he showed them a big box of milk powder. Then the policewoman asked why he stole the milk powder. Wang Tianxia argued that he didn't steal it and only took some because his wallet has been running low lately. Not only that, Wang Tianxia also confessed that he did it because he heard that Ding Peng's brother owned a famous milk powder stock, so he only intended to sell some of it to earn some extra pocket money. Wang Tianxia looked very clever to trick them all. After the matter was over, Wang Tianxia walked out and approached Shen Kei, who was already waiting for him in front of the car. Then the woman greeted him with a smile. But Wang Tianxia looked angry at the woman because she didn't heed his order to lure them away and almost got himself caught by the policeman. But Shen Kei still didn't feel guilty, so she said that the most important thing was that he got out safely. Emotionally, Wang Tianxia warned the woman not to mess with him if she still wanted his help. Looking at Wang Tianxia, who was still emotional, Shen Kei tried to calm him down. Then Shen Kei pointed at the group of men who were staring at Wang Tianxia with a sharp gaze. She offered to help him get rid of those men. But Wang Tianxia refused because he felt that he could handle the problem alone. In the middle of the night on a small, quiet street, Wang Tianxia was surrounded by a group of men. 
Wang Tianxia deliberately brought them to that small alley because he knew that a group of men were following him. He did this because Wang Tianxia planned to teach them all a lesson. After that, Wang Tianxia belittled them as if he was defying the group of men. Because he didn't accept his words just now, Bai told his men to immediately finish off the bad boy. They all then ran while aiming the wooden blocks in their hands to attack Wang Tianxia simultaneously. It didn't take long for Wang Tianxia to knock them all to the ground with ease. A moment after, there was the sound of footsteps approaching towards Bii who was already lying helpless. It turned out to be Shen Kei. Seeing someone coming, Bai immediately asked for her help in a soft tone. Instantly, Shen Kei lifted her foot and directly stepped on the man's body with such force that he screamed in pain. Shen Kei stared blankly in front of him. Her mind was thinking about Wang Tianxia's figure. That woman was getting more and more interested in him. At noon in the study, Liu Fei Er was seen staring out the window. She glanced at Wang Tianxia, who was sitting on the sofa, then asked if this was done by the Fortune God gang. Wang Tianxia confirmed it, and then he told her that he had just finished dealing with the stray dog gang and now had to deal with the Fortune God gang again. Immediately, the man leaned his body on the chair. He realized that the stray dog gang was just the beginning. Liu Fei Er asked why they were targeting bars. Then Wang Tian Xia answered her that it was all because of Ding Peng. Chen Hao's mother borrowed money to pay the bar's rent. If there was a problem, Ding Peng wouldn't leave it at that since they were close friends. Then Liu Fei Er concluded that they pressured Ding Peng to target Wang Tian Xia. Then the man explained that the Tian Xia gang started its involvement in the illegal field. There were nine sectors and 18 gangs under their control, each with their own way of doing things. It was like smuggling goods, pirating goods, theft and other illegal activities, almost covering all categories. The problem was that Chen Hao's mother borrowed money from the Fortune God gang to pay her bar's rent. Liu Fei Er felt worried if someone had sent the Fortune God gang around them. Then the woman asked Wang Tianxia what he would do about this. Grinning sinisterly, Wang Tianxia said that someone had started a game, then he would get into that game. He would try to pull those people out of their hiding places. On the rooftop of the school building, Chen Hao could be seen staring blankly down. Sun Xiaodong suddenly came over because of Chen Hao's call. After that, Chen Hao asked about the state of his uncle's gang. Hearing the question, Sun Xiaodong turned his face away and his expression showed sadness. Most of the members of his uncle's gang had left for other gangs after his uncle's departure, and only a few remained in it. Chen Hao told him to keep them away from the Tianxia gang as there were many things they still had to do. Hearing the order made Sun Xiaodong wonder why he was doing that. Then Chen Hao looked back at him, then told him that they were going to fight against the Tianxia gang.